How's it going, guys? How is everybody doing? Griffin's fate? Oh, yeah, dude. My favorite. I'm trying to finish it so I can trade it in while it's still worth something. Because apparently GameStop has that 50% trade-in bonus next week, so I can get like 36 bucks back for it. So I'm trying to finish it, but... Yeah, I don't know if I'll stream it, because it's not very interesting to watch, Ralph that's here. for sure. General Ari, do you copy? Copy. Anything? <laughs> Our plan is to head to the Merrick Battleship in search of more Aquanium. That's music to my ears. I wanted to dispatch a recon team. Better than Stellar Cutting now. Absolutely not. The only game I play on my Xbox is MLB The Show, which is ironically a Sony exclusive. Well, it's not a Sony exclusive anymore because the MLB told them, like, you need to put this on other platforms. Because they were trying to use the video game to grow people's interest in baseball. <laughs> but, yeah. This is the Oblivion soundtrack. Now it's Skyrim, dude. Fake fan. But, yeah, we'll never get music like this in another Elder Scrolls game because Bethesda fired the uh, composer. for, you know, false sexual assault allegations or whatever the fuck. Unbelievable. What's taking Are so long? This is Sandland, basically. It's like anime slop, kind of. But, yeah, it's called Sandland. See, Oski Waski with the five, if Floyd Mayweather can read one full page of a Harry Potter book. Nick God! I'll give you $500. You think you can do it? Nah, there's no way. I ain't getting any of that money. That's right! That's right! Yeah, crowd, white boy! There are other demons who went out on journeys before us, you know. Dude, all of these sexual assault allegations are fucking bullshit nowadays. It's just attention seeking women. That's it, dude. Maybe we'll run into them during our own travels. Does spending 2800 on an iPad Pro... Yeah, I wouldn't spend that much on an iPad. You can get a fucking, like, top-end MacBook Pro for that. That's kind of a waste of money, if you ask me. Like, I would just get another laptop at that point. Cause I mean, the only thing you're paying for above like the thousand dollar like model is more storage, which you probably don't need. Griffin converted to a black is oh yeah absolutely Any outsiders right. going to the capital are required to pass through a military checkpoint they turn back anyone suspicious I can't I this shit. right that's how they've managed to defend the capital from threat for all these years yeah I don't like the racer outfit for Eve either Thank you for coming. 
No, 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 no. It's not the work. It's it's this is what it is. Girl, do you work at Subway because you're the only one that can get me a foot long? That's what you're looking for. Girl, you must work at Subway because you're the only one that can get me a foot long. That's the one you're looking for. I still can't believe Xbox shut down Tango. I was looking forward to Evil Within 3. Yep, and they would have had one of the few horror games on the market. Aside from Resident Evil. That was very short-sighted. The interesting thing I read, and then I saw some other guy's video on it too, who's like a big Evil Within fan. Um, he said that the Evil Within 2 wasn't even made by Shinji Mikami. Like, Shinji Mikami had already kind of left the studio when Evil Within 2 had started production because the director was somebody completely different than him. And then Hi Fi Rush apparently wasn't even like his project at all. It was like some side project that one of the people who worked there wanted to work on. So that's what's interesting is this whole narrative that, you know, the studio fell apart because Shinji Mikami left is complete bullshit because, you know, Evil Within 2 was made by a separate dev, basically. Shinji Mikami wasn't really even a part of the development. And then, you know... Hi-Fi Rush was made by a completely different person from start to finish. Like, it was a brand new IP, not even from him. So, yeah. And then there's also the thing where it's like somebody pointed out, like, maybe Xbox rushed Hi-Fi Rush out into Game Pass with a stealth drop so that they would have an excuse to close down the studio, which... Bro, honestly, that kind of makes a lot of sense. Like, maybe they sent it out to die in Game Pass with no marketing, like, as a shadow drop, so that way they would have justification for the studio to shut down, because maybe they didn't have faith in it. That's what's also, like, possible. So, that would make a lot of sense. And the fact that it was so well-received, I think, surprised them. Because if they really thought they had something special there, why would they just release it with no fucking hype? You know, I don't think they thought it was anything that special. They probably thought it was going to be like a, you know, mid-70s tier game with critics and just kind of land with a resounding thud. I'll be just fine. Sand land flop. Yeah, I would have, well, dude, I would imagine the budget for this game is like fucking microscopic. I don't really think this game probably needed to sell any more than a million copies to break even, in all honesty. This game probably was dirt fucking cheap to make. This is like the definition of Bandai Japan slop. And you're playing it? Yeah, I bought it to try out. Am I not allowed to buy video games? I'm trying to finish it so I can trade it in. The desert gets awfully 
I'm banned from gaming? That's right. No video games for me, dude. Yeah, I'm only allowed to play Call of Duty, guys. Remember. That's, that's right. I forgot. It's the only game I ever play at all. Mother's Day to all the moms in the chat. That's right. Prince, would you please let me have the next turn at the wheel? Rock, paper, scissors me for it. You're on. Ready? Rock, Hit me up paper, if you want someone scissors. other than your kids to call you mom. Scissors. Yay! I win. Ah, I'll get you next time. Here we go. See, May first burst with the five Xbox complains about big budgets but closes a small studio to focus on big budget games. It's the most Xbox thing I've ever seen. Exactly, man. They are the most bipolar dipshits in the gaming industry. They don't know what the fuck they want, honestly. They they really don't. They have no clue what the fuck they're doing. A room full of shit-flinging apes would be better, honestly. Real talk. And Wing Cake with the two, are you watching Diesel Patch's video on Synthetic Man? Uh, I wasn't planning on it, I didn't know one existed. Was it just uploaded today or something? Never get over how humongous they are. So did the Peachy build this one too? Yes, they did. The Peachy's technology never ceases to amaze. This Oblivion music is peak, man. Yeah, they don't know anything yet. YouTubers seem to know everything about their business. I'm surprised all of you YouTubers aren't out there with Microsoft money. Am I your gesture? Oh my god. I only tell one. Hit me. Why are cacti so grumpy? They're prickly by nature. Yes, you are a fucking cock. Congratulations. Consume your slop and ask for more, bro. Enjoy. You are the purpose... Or, wait. Well, shit. No, actually, the game pass fucking goy slot machine exists for the purpose of feeding people like you. You know? You are the reason why goy pass is even a thing. You will eat the bugs if told to. Congratulations. We've got to stay vigilant. anti grav stone? What the fuck is that? Buy some of them just in case I need them later. Thank you for coming. Mm. 
Dude, it doesn't take a fucking genius to understand that Microsoft doesn't know what the fuck people want when it comes to video games. The entire reason Goy Pass exists is because they couldn't sell any video games at all. And you will buy the full price remasters and remakes. What remasters and remakes have I bought? What Sony remasters and remakes have I bought? I didn't buy The Last of Us remake. Didn't buy The Last of Us Part 2 remake. Um, I didn't buy the spider Mid remake. Uh, I didn't pay full price for the Medieval remake. Yeah, I don't know. Must have me confused like with somebody else. Side is down. Final so Fantasy VII? Oh yeah, dude, that's just a basic up res of the original, right? That's basically not an entirely new game. <laughs> you know, that's just a quick, uh, you know, graphical boost. Sony can't figure out how to sell their games to PC players. I'm pretty sure they can. I can go and buy their games on Steam right now. It ain't that hard. Why do people hate Final Fantasy VII Remake so much? Because they either can't get it because they don't have a PlayStation or, you know, new equals bad. Dude, Final Fantasy VII Remake is top tier. What Xbox game is top tier? Um, I guess you could say Forza Horizon, that's it. It's about all they got that's top tier nowadays. Maybe we can crash through on landing. Everything else is in the dump. Hellblade? Hell yeah, dude. 100%. I love walking simulators. Boy, those sure are fun, guys. That's what I buy a video game console to play, is walk in a straight line and listen to schizo voices for five hours. Yeah, that's the thing I thought was interesting about Hellblade. Is like I thought Hellblade was like the Viking setting was more of like a metaphor or like an allegory or some shit. Like it wasn't an actual literal Viking. Like that's what I thought it was. It was like basically a woman's mental internal struggle. But apparently now they're making it about like actual fucking Vikings. Like did anyone else kind of feel that was weird? 
Because, like, I thought the whole Viking shit was, like, supposed to be more of, like, a representation of her mental state. Not the fact that she was literally a fucking Viking, bro. <laughs> like, I, I don't know why the fuck they just changed that. Like, that's one of the biggest retcons from, you know, Hellblade 1 and 2. Is Hellblade 1 was not an actual Norse game. It was originally just, like, a fucking, you know, representation of her unstable mental, like fucking facilities it wasn't that she was a literal fucking viking dude halo infinite's just not fun i don't know i'd much rather play mcc still i wish they would put halo 5 in mcc so i could actually have the best halo game to play but you know I just can't play first-person shooters on controller anymore, man. I lost that ability completely. I can barely play third-person shooters on controller. Dude, Hellblade only sold 10 million copies after they dropped the price to $3, gave it away in PlayStation Plus, gave it away in shit like Humble Bundle, and, you know, you know, for what, seven years it's been on sale for $3? Of course it's going to sell a lot. It's fucking cheap. Why did you think it was a metaphor? Because that's what, like, the fucking developer said, is, like, the story of Hellblade is a representation of her mental state. It wasn't, like, a literal, oh... Set in fucking 800 AD, Senua is a fucking Norse raider or some shit like that. That was never the fucking, uh, never the plot. It was more so about, you know, a dive into a mentally unstable person's mind. That's why there was all this mystical shit happening is because, like, her brain was, like, basically manufacturing the setting to cope with the fucking mental stress. <laughs> but yeah, now they've like retconned that. The next floor from here. And apparently now it's literally about Vikings. So, <laughs> I guess they really needed a sequel. I don't know, man. That game did not need a sequel. What did I just get? Ah, oh, shit. To cope with the state of Xbox, yeah. Yeah, when Hellblade 1 originally released, it was a PlayStation exclusive, and it only sold 300,000 copies in the first few years. It was a massive flop. That's the reason why Microsoft was even allowed to, or not allowed, but able to get Ninja Theory for so cheap, is because nobody wanted them, because, you know, they had a massive fucking flop in the form of Hellblade that had a huge budget. And had Sony's, like, backing and everything. The game completely bombed when it released. That's the reason why Ninja Theory was even up for sale in the first place, is because they were going broke. Yeah, the journalists love Hellblade, man. A woman that's ugly, mental health, and no gameplay. That literally checks the fucking games journalism in the 2020s checkbox perfectly. The only thing that they could do better is give her a heckin' chonker of a cat that you can pet.
Bro, that's busted. Oh my god. I can just straight up fucking auto kill people now. Nice. To the Xbox fanboys in the chat, drop your gamer tags. Let's see if you play the games. Yeah, exactly. I've played most of the games I talk shit about. So that's the thing is I have actual receipts. I can back up and say, yeah, I played this shit. I have a reason to like it or love it. Motherfuckers on the internet usually don't fucking even play the shit they talk about. And then they'll make excuses like, oh, well, I have a job, blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, well, you're sitting here hyping up how much you love something, so you'll make time. Or they'll be like that one guy, um, the fucking hold the line dipshit. Who, you know, literally has like 4,000 hours in Fortnite and doesn't even play fucking Xbox games. <laughs> but shills for every single one of them that releases. You know, there's also that. You know, they spend all day white knighting for Xbox, and they don't even play Xbox games. They have, like, 4,000 hours in fucking Fortnite. Couldn't be me, man. That's all I can say. For the most part, y'all have seen me either stream or review most of the games I talk shit about, so. I have a clean record. Any good gaming sales on? Um, I mean, other than the Mass Effect trilogy being six bucks on pretty much every digital storefront, I don't really know any specifics. I don't know. I don't think PlayStation has a sale. Going on. They just had their big one for the summer, or spring, or whatever. So I don't know if they're still doing one or not. Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. I can't afford this shit. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You can get Hi-Fi Rush. I can't afford this shit! The Sims. Damn, bro, that's expensive. 80 bucks for the fucking Tales of Arise, like, complete edition normally? Usually anime games drop in price pretty quick, but that one's hanging on strong. It mainly looks like a bunch of anime games that are on sale. That's a good deal. Five bucks. Oh, this is a good deal. The Prime Evil Collection. You get Diablo 2 Remastered and Diablo 3 for uh, 20 bucks. That's a good deal. More anime shit. Lots of DLCs. Oh, how much is this? 
Does this come with everything? I may buy this. If this comes with everything, I'll probably pick this up. That's a good deal. 50 bucks for everything. Because the amount of music you get with that is crazy. Dude, I can get foam stars? Hell yeah. Please fucking play that? Why? <laughs> I love the Final Fantasy music, so a Final Fantasy, like, music game would be a uh, pretty peak. So the premium edition does come with... Alright, I'll pick that up then. That's a good deal, 50 bucks. 50 bucks is the price of the normal physical version, so... Oh, dude, I remember this game. This shit's garbage. Agony. Oh, yeah, I need to get my uh, free games with uh, PlayStation Plus for this month, too. Skull and Bones, 50% off already. Bruh, <laughs> put that down to 80% off and I'll bite. Oh, God, these fucking Fruit Loops. The story to this game is absolutely retarded, man. It's really fucking dumb. Alright, let me switch my vehicle. Not so invulnerable anymore! Dude, this fight is irritating. <laughs> this isn't even difficult, bro. Don't let up, 
Oh, it looks like I'm getting a bunch of deal notifications right now. Speaking of game sales, give me a second, I can check. Once I beat this thing. Hopefully, it shouldn't take too much longer, man. This is dragging on for quite a while. Of course, it changes directions. Alright, there we go. Yeah, game sales have been pretty fucking terrible lately. So, Outcast, a new beginning PS5 edition is 120 bucks. No idea what the fuck that is. Valkyrie Elysium PS4 is $15 on loot. Oh, that's that Amazon shit. Okay. Uh, that's a pretty good deal. Dead Cells Return to Castlevania Edition for the Switch is 20 bucks on Woot. Persona 3. Oh, no, that's for Xbox. Never mind. You can get that in Goy Pass. Yeah, not really anything that great. Oh yeah, dude, the Sus Squad. Now, scoop. See, Bamaham Yum with the two, Hellblade and Peak Birth are both schizo simulator. Uh, to a degree, yeah, you're right. Cause you know, Schizo Roth is fucking with Cloud the entire game. So true. But to be fair, that is not all just inside Cloud's head. I have a large library of PS4 games and a lot are missing or completely broken on PS5. And what do you mean? Missing or completely broken? How so? Well, the PSVR games make sense because PSVR 2 is not compatible with PSVR 1 games, which is fucking retarded as shit. But yeah. There's like five games that don't. Which ones? I don't know. I haven't run into a problem of a PS4 game not working on PS5 yet. Play something else. This I'm trying to get through this shit, bro. I want to be able to sell it, but I want to finish it because, you know, I already paid for it. So I have the sunk cost fallacy.
What time is it? Yeah, I'm just gonna reload that save because I fell all the way down. Would you watch the DBR or DBDR? And I don't know who the fuck that is. A black pill channel, basically a doomer. Why would I want to watch that? What would be the point? Tire tracks. That's a sign that someone's been here before us. Following them might lead us to a useful location like a village or town. The car should also go a bit faster than it would on unpacked ground. Uh, I don't really care about rescuing that guy. Where do I need to go? Ah, back here. Dude, that's crazy. I bought like all these Final Fantasy Noir cards back in the day. And I was getting them for like 50 bucks for like 9.5s from BGS. There's a set of them that's about to end for 250 bucks now for two. That's pretty good. I've already doubled my money on them. I have like 40 of them at least. So. What? What? In the? Going through his Japanese gaming stage. No, it's just Japanese games are the only games that are actually fun anymore. I just played through God of War Ragnarok and fucking hated every minute of it, so I've played Western games. They just fucking suck. And I mean, I played Stellar Blade, which is a Korean game, so that was still good. There's no good Western games anymore. They all fucking suck. They're all glorified movies, walking simulators, or they're just fucking terrible. Why would I play? No, I don't think this is better than Stellar Blade. I've already beaten Stellar Blade twice. I need to beat this game so I can sell it. I have how many hours in Stellar Blade? Let's see. 48 hours in Stellar Blade. I've played Stellar Blade through twice. Or actually, I'm like at the very end of my second playthrough, but whatever. Like they brought a whole brigade. <laughs> Great. Take them all out in one fell swoop. Look. Stellar cheeks and Final Fantasy peak. Yeah, honestly, I mean, right now my rankings for the games of the year so far: are Final Fantasy Rebirth, Stellar Blade, then Rise of Ronin, and then Dragon's Dogma too. Those are the four best games I've played thus far. Trump had 80k people in his rally in New Jersey. Yeah, have you heard, like, recently the uh, New York polls or whatever are the closest they've ever been for, like, a Republican versus Democrat presidential election in a very long time. 
Because apparently all this shit with Trump being in New York all the time now is like actually playing to his favor with, you know, the New York City residents. Which is funny because he's like, he's shown up at like all the local businesses and just random places and shit. Because, you know, he goes to like fucking McDonald's for lunch. <laughs> so, you know, he's gotten to interact with like normal fucking people and, you know, they're starting to come around, which is interesting. Yeah, Tales of Arise is better. Definitely. I have Tales of Arise. I just don't have the DLC, but I don't really think I need the DLC. Dude, the story of this game is so fucking cringe. Apparently the blonde chick is half demon or some shit. Bring it <laughs> fucking retarded. All right, I'm skipping. I don't fucking care. Yeah, well, that Toriyama guy literally just uses the same designs over and over again in pretty much every single property. Because, like, he has the android chick with the blonde hair. He's got this chick with the blonde hair. In Dragon Quest Eleven. Serena with the blonde hair looks identical. Like, he has a type when it comes to blonde women, for sure. Griffin, never meet your heroes. I don't plan on it. They're already dead. What? <laughs> then what? Like I would tell you. Do you know what's retarded about that scene? Is they've already established the fact that guns don't hurt demons in this game. That blonde chick is part demon. She could literally just eat the fucking bullet and not have any damage done to her, but yeah, somehow she just got kidnapped with a gun. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> it's so dumb, bro. Oh my god. But yeah. Anime, bro. Thank you. Not even, not even once, bro. Oh shit, it's like raining. I'm somewhat paying attention to the story. It's really dumb, but yeah. Oh shit. All right. Well, I may lose power just an FYI because it's like thundering and shit now. So. Knowing what they can do and what their weakness. Dude, I swear, my dog is like a cat. He just leaves half his food sitting there all the time. You don't look so chipper yourself. Imagine losing... Yeah, it's just my area is old, so they have a bunch of, like, fucking shitty wiring. It's all above ground lines. So the smallest branch can knock down your power. Unfortunately, the good thing is, is I'm in an extremely dense population center. So, usually it comes back pretty quick. Nah, Apollo doesn't give a fuck about loud noises, man. 
I uh, like blasted these massive speakers I have next to him with like thunder and like gunshots and fireworks and everything when he was a young puppy when he was eating so that way he would just get used to it and then didn't give a shit about it later in life so yeah no he doesn't care about that type of stuff you have a generator yeah I don't so I mean, I could get a generator, but I don't know if my uh, apartment building would be too happy about me running a gas generator inside. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Hope to see you soon. Oh. What would you like? Y'all hear that? Dude, it is pouring out right now. Jesus. Yeah, I may lose power. Thunderstorms and lightning strikes over here. Alright, why can't I... Uh... Really? I need B-grade bolts? Are you fucking... Dude, I assembled all the parts and I still need more fucking parts. Slop. Alright, let me go buy this shit real quick. Thank you! Wait, did I just buy the right thing? Okay, good. No, I didn't. Thank you! Dude, the oblivion music is nice. Judson Watkins the five in Japan as made May 9th as Goku Day official holiday by Japanese government. IGN is doing an interview with Phil during an Xbox event or before. I think he's doing they're doing it directly after. Which should be interesting. I wonder if they'll uh you know glaze him or not. That'll be what's interesting to see. As if they just, you know, glaze him for an hour or whatever. Like the uh, kind of funny guys did. Alright. It's the same controls as every other vehicle. Why do they need... Oh. oh my god, this thing fucking sucks. Holy shit.
place called the Subterranean Link Ruins has got to be awfully dark and damp, right? Shut up. Where did I need to go? Shit. Oh, it was over here. Yeah, that's right. Griffin was the Cyberpunk 2077 expansion. Woke. I don't, don't know. I didn't play through it. I'm not really a Cyberpunk fan, in all honesty, so I couldn't tell you, man. I didn't play it. And Chronicle with the one gift of membership. Appreciate it, dude. May 1st burst with the five. Phil Spencer force feeds these people gruel every day, and they just keep begging for more slop when he's done. It's beyond it pathetic. It really is, man. Like, think about what you used to get during the 360 era compared to now. Third or first party. It's not even fucking similar. It's sad, bro. It really is. And Claude's Mystery of the 50. Laugh my ass off. I just saw graffitis on Claudia Shane Baum's presidential candidate propaganda where they call her Jew murderer and Jew... <laughs> Fuck. Who is this? And Zong Zena with the five. Play 82 all the way. It's a bit of a throwback to peak trust. Uh... I don't know if I will trust, but yeah, I can play it. Whenever y'all say something's peak, it's usually shit. I'm just gonna run that out there. But. Give me a second, I can pull it up. Yeah, when the game pass is thirty dollars a month, Cold Eastwood will be like. But gosh dang it, I've had so much fun playing it. Disaster. All right. Synthetic man hated rebirth. Um, that wasn't the impression I got from his review. He thought it was all right. He thought the original was better, but I don't remember him specifically saying he hated it. If anything, he hated Advent Children. That was what he mainly raged about during that review. Was his hatred of Advent Children because it made Tifa basically nothing but a friend to Cloud. And he didn't like the fact that Cloud still liked Aerith after all those years. That was really the only thing he, like, hated. Thank you. Yeah, Synthetic Man ships Cloud and Tifa. Definitely. Yeah, he wants more of like a remaster than an actual remake of the games. Like he just wanted a one-to-one -one remake of it versus them redoing the plot. Which, whatever. Personally, I don't because it's boring. Like you already know what's going to happen exactly if you already played 7. Like there needs to be some element of surprise. I don't know, man. I don't want to play the exact same fucking game. 
Uh, Daryl's on with a five just bought Pokemon Sapphire and Ruby GVA. I need Pokemon Fire Red, Crystal Gold, Yellow Red, and Blue, and I'm good for mainline games. Nice, dude. Do you have one of those uh, analog pockets? If you don't, you should get one. They're really cool. They're like these custom like Game Boys, but they use like actual Game Boy like chipsets. So it's like literally playing on native hardware, but it's basically just a newer version of the Game Boy. It's pretty cool. I have one. I don't use it because I don't have Game Boy games. I have one in the eventual case that I do get Game Boy games. But yeah, that's a really cool device if you're uh, interested in playing old Game Boy games. Mama Luigi with the five, can we watch Giga Boots? <laughs> we were right about Xbox, was curious the timestamp. Oh shit. Alright, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, three hours. Alright, yeah, maybe. We can see. Depending on how long it is, I don't know if we'll watch all of it, but yeah. You should go ahead and get the analog pocket if you're serious about it, because I think they're available right now from analog. Like, you don't have to buy it off the secondary market. So you can actually get one direct from them. But yeah, if you're serious about, you know, playing old Game Boy games, I think that's definitely a uh, wise purchase, personally. Bro, I have no idea how to get over here. I guess right there. See, Caleb Martin with the five. I'm very disappointed in Xbox, but I think things will get better. They've been in rough patches before, and one step is giving Phil his pink slip. I don't think that's going to fix it, though. Like, who takes over after Phil? Matt Booty? He's not effective. Sarah Bond? She's been there seven years and done nothing. Like, unless they bring in a fucking superstar like Jack Tretton from PlayStation, you know, the guy who turned around the PS3. You know, I don't really know who the fuck can correct the course. Like, sure they've dug themselves into a fucking, you know, ditch that's just getting harder and harder to get out of. So... There just needs to be, like, a complete and total overhaul, and they need to bring in somebody who's worked in that industry before. But the way Microsoft operates, they don't like to do that. They like to promote their own people, because they're very fucking, you know, incestuous, like most large corporations. Mark Cerny's not a leader. He's the hardware guy for PlayStation. He just designs the PlayStation architecture. He's not an actual business guy. He's a technology dude. That's not Xbox's problem.
what bridges are for, Bradens. Bridges are key to travel. Build one and watch the traffic flow. Not so many bridges around here, though. Well, they cost a lot of money. Yeah, apparently Hellblade 2 is only like 64th for most wish listed on Steam. So I don't really think most people give a fuck about it. It's going to get sent out to die. <laughs> Because, I mean, the marketing for it's been piss fucking poor. Like, they're afraid to show off the game because they know if people see what the actual game is like, no one will want it. They have to keep showing, like, these sizzle reels, basically, of, like, you know, 30-second gameplay snippets. Because, you know, they don't want to show off what the actual, you know, moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is like because it's fucking horrible. Like, if you showed someone a 10-minute snippet of Hellblade gameplay, they would be fucking bored to death. It would do more harm than good. Well, why are they marketing a game the week before it comes out? Shouldn't you market the game, I don't know, months before it comes out? Sounds like they're doing last minute shit like always. Oh, disgusting. This is gonna be trash. Mm -mm. Be careful, I don't know if I wanna play Sabaton, bro. Of course it's not. I See, this is what I knew. Somebody says, oh yeah, it's peak. Trust. I should never trust you all because it's fucking garbage. Sabaton is like literal fucking Redditor music. It's the type of shit that LARPers jerk off to. I'm right to not trust. It's like the crowd of, dude, if I lived in ancient Japan, I totally would have been a samurai type. Like, that's literally the type of people that listen to Sabaton. The type of people who think they would have been, like, this elite fucking warrior back in the day, even though they're fat fucks who don't do anything in real life now. And can't even be bothered to go to the gym. Bro, if superpowers were real, I would totally be the most badass hero. It's like, no, you wouldn't. You'd be a fat, lazy slob that doesn't do anything. Just like now. How often do I hit the gym? Pretty much every day.
Wonder how I get up there. Bridges are key to travel. Build one and I don't know. I don't need to get up there. Not so many bridges around here though. How many pull-ups can I do? I don't know, I haven't tried. Well, they cost a lot of money. And the Royal Army's destroyed a bunch of them too. of seeing so much water here. This place seems almost holy to me. You're making me want to barf. Uh, my head hurts. Mine too. Uh. Oh yeah, that's right. You can't fucking swim in this. Ah, <sighs> dude, this is like literally Japan slot, bro. There's, like, not really anything notable about this game at all, dude. It's like Bandai was like, yeah, we need to put out another game sometime. We'll just make this one real quick. It should take, like, ten minutes. Yeah, the vehicle combat's all right, but you know, it's just a lot of filler. That's a special lever. Let's give it a pull. Woohoo! Woo Woohoo! Woo the water level raised. Hooray! Water level <laughs> now I don't have to kill myself. Sayo. What do you guys think? Should I buy some Sword Art Online games, dude? And play as Kirito and bang bad bitches in VR? I will say, that's like the only redeeming thing about Sword Art Online is he actually fucks the shit out of that brown-haired chick. I can't remember her name. Um... What was her fucking name? What was the chick's name for fucking Sword Art Online? The brown haired one. Yeah, Asuna. There you go. Yeah, that's like the one redeeming quality about that show past the like first four episodes is the fact that he bangs the shit out of that chick. Which is so fucking rare for anime because most of the guys are incompetent clowns. shit. Dude, the cousin was fucking annoying in that show. Basically, every single girl was annoying in that show, except the brown hair. Or Asuna. Well, there you go. That was the only standable chick. The, all the other ones were fucking horrible. Which made the show horrible. It's like you literally introduce the best female character in the show and then you have us believe that he would actually be even somewhat interested in these other disgusting side bitches. It's like, just get them off the fucking screen. The harem aspect of that show was so fucking unnecessary. 
They actually had a decent premise and they completely fucking ruined it. Yeah, dude, the fucking AI daughter. That shit was so. At least that was sort of fun. <laughs> oh my god, dude! I oh shit, stop. Ugh, dude, that was so. I like literally wanted to physically die when I got to that. I was like, "Are you fucking shitting me?" Oh my god, bro, that shit was so. I have never seen, like, the first three or four episodes of that show is really good. You're like, all right, I can get behind this shit. This is actually pretty good. And then you get to fucking episode five, six, whatever, and it's like, oh, God. It's fucking garbage. It's more fucking anime slop. It's like anime fucking writers are allergic to actually telling a good story. Only anime I ever watched past 10 episodes is Dragon Ball. I've watched many ep animes past 10 episodes, but I could never get past two episodes of Dragon Ball. I thought it was boring. I don't I don't like the art style for like, you know, what's his name? Toriyama or whatever. I don't his art style does not resonate with me at all. I think it's kinda ugly. So Dragon Ball was never a visually appealing show to me, which if you're watching anime, like, the visuals have to appeal to you. Otherwise, it's like, alright, what's the fucking point? Nah, Bleach is better than Dragon Ball. Hands down. Bleach is peak. Bleach is like the one fucking anime that doesn't have a completely unstandable fucking main protagonist. At no point does Ichigo become a fucking insufferable little twat. Which is so fucking rare. Forming in a hovercraft. Bleach makes you want to down some bleach? Well, what stopped you, man? Don't let your dreams be memes. Go for it. Chug the whole bottle right now. Dude, this hovercraft is fucking OP from damage perspectives. I should. Uh, it handles like crap, though.
A fire alarm? No, that's the game. Dude, I am not that ghetto. Thank you very much. I take offense to that. Dude, you know what Xbox should do for their controller? They should put the chirp into the like low battery indicator. To help uh, you know, the low income families feel more at home with uh, their game pass, so let's use the hovercraft. Why does my hovercraft keep disappearing, man? So irritating. Like, disappears after 10 seconds. If even that long. See, like, this segment of the game is pure fucking filler. This does not need to be this long. I've literally done nothing but pulled fucking levers for like the past 20 minutes. Oh shit. Woo. Let's see if I can make this. No, fuck. I don't want to go this way. What? Seriously? This is oblivion music. This game is kind of boring. It's like a good $20 game, I feel like. But I wouldn't pay more than that. Oh, sh dude, fuck this. This is so fucking jank, bro. Oh, my God. All right, so you just can't make it over there. Lovely. A hundred percent the book reading game? Absolutely not. It's Pentiment, by the way. So am I just at like a dead end now and I can't fucking do anything? Sick.
was gonna see if I can jank it up. No. Nope. Dude, nobody gives a fuck about Xbox's roadmap. They've had a roadmap for the past 10 years and nothing's fucking materialized. That's that wait for E3 mentality that killed the fucking platform. I have no idea where I'm supposed to go. I don't see like a lever. Oh wait, shit, there is one right here. There we go. Nope, I can't pull it. Oh, there we go. I was about to say, why can't I pull it? More platforming. Fuck. Is there anything in here? Yep. Yeah, this is the ten hour loop. Feels like Zelda with the eh, kinda I guess. With like the temples and shit. Yeah. Alrighty. That should do it. It disappeared again. Why? Hell yeah, dude. We was pharaohs and she. Having fun yet? Oh yeah, dude. But gosh dang it, I've had so much fun playing it. Let's see, hold on. Ah, uh, let's see. Fuck, where are we? Pursuit. 
delicious. Uh, Buff Garfield with the two. Oblivion memes. The best kind of music. I don't know, man. It's going to be sad when Elder Scrolls doesn't even have Jeremy Soul's music. That's fucking pathetic. Like, how the fuck do you fire the guy that literally made your franchise as great as it is? And Inky Squids with the five. Griffin, I'm debating what to play right now. It's either Halo 5 campaign, Doom Eternal, or trying Suicide Squad. Kill all the Arkham Bird. Do not play Suicide Squad. That game is absolutely terrible. Uh, between Halo 5's campaign, I would say Doom Eternal is better than Halo 5, but either one of those I feel like is a good bet. But yeah, don't don't bother with Suicide Slot, bro. That ain't worth it. Hover away. That game is cheeks. Yeah, it's like firing John Williams from Star Wars. Shit's crazy. And Groovy with the two, only anime I binged was Neon Genesis. I've never watched that. I know people really like that one, but I've never seen it personally. That's the one with the uh, Max, right? Only an- wait, I read that. Uh, Buff Garfield with the two, Mass Effect 2 is- Oh, dude, the Mass Effect 2 hover thing is horrible. That was absolutely fucking horrid. Compared to Mass Effect 1, it was like- what the fuck happened? I absolutely hated the vehicle in Mass Effect 2. It was terrible. An Arsene with the two. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood has anime humor, but story is peak. I've never watched that either. And won the cash with the 234. What is this game? Sandland. Or Martin O'Donnell from Bungie. Yeah, he's running for Congress now, apparently, which is funny. You know, he makes fucking fascist music now because he is a, a Trump supporter. Uh-oh. It's a good thing the blonde chick isn't here. Oh, they're moving. I was like, how did that miss? Don't let up, friend.
question. Good job, Prince. Watch out for attacks from the water! Oh, fuck. Let the beast have it! I'm gonna have to play fucking peekaboo with this thing now. Yeah, I've played Dragon Quest XI. I beat it on PC. Back when it came out. There we go. That shit was so fucking boring, dude. Let's see, Ferrix with the 10, it's probably just me, but I've never had issues with the Mako and Mass... No, I thought it was fine, and I played the Legendary Edition version on PC. Hell, I was even looking forward to those sections. I liked the exploration of Mass Effect 1. Yeah, I thought it was good. In Mass Effect 2, it was a downgrade. They ruined it. And DJ Aftershock with the 2, thoughts on a sugar tax. I think it'd be smart. The thing I think is we need uh, higher insurance rates for fat people. Everything should be way more expensive if you're fat. But yeah, I think unhealthy foods should have an extra tax on them, personally. Anything to discourage their consumption. How is this fun? It's not really, I don't know, bro. It's pretty mid. I'm trying to see what percent, I'm at 61% complete. Come on. No, Suicide Squad is worse. Four eyes. No. DJ Aftershock of the two. Oh my god, Griffin wants to ban oh tasty sugar and food cunt. That's right. Ban it all. <laughs> yeah, I didn't subscribe to the Will of Phil. I'm sorry, guys. I'll do better next time. Please forgive.
Whoa, dude. Arrived in the forest land. Well, at least this environment looks so much better than the other one. <laughs> Fuck. The world looks way better. Doesn't look as bland anymore. So I guess there's that. The road's well maintained, but trees jut out over it and obstruct the view sometimes. Want to drive? It. Do it with care. But when I'm Um, I played like five to ten hours of Tales of Arise when it came out. I never finished it though. But it was pretty decent for what I played. I would actually like to go back and finish it at some point. But I'd restart it because I've forgotten everything about it. Farm subsidies aren't the problem, man. Most people don't eat food from a farm. They eat fucking goy slop from China. They're eating shit like Skittles and Oreos and stuff. They're not eating like fucking corn and bread and soybeans and that type of shit. They're eating fucking literal slop. Well, I guess they are eating the soybeans, so there you go. New generation of the five react to. Okay. Uh, DJ Aftershock with the two. I can't eat my Skittles because they don't look the same. Exactly, dude. I need my fucking carcinogen food coloring to make my Skittles taste as good. We can't keep up with you, Prince. Otherwise, what's the point? By the way, who are you exactly? And I saw her at the five. What the fuck is this? Extremely disappointed in Marvel Rivals. Multiple creators asked for key codes to gain access to the playtest and are asked to sign a contract. Contract signs away your rights to negatively review the game. Many streamers have signed without reading just to play insanity. Non-disparagement, content creators not to make or agrees not to make any public statements or engage in discussions that are detrimental to the reputation of the game. This includes but is not limited to making disparaging or satirical comics about any game related materials such as game features, characters, or music, engaging in malicious comparisons with competitors or belittling the gameplay or differences of Marvel rivals or providing subjective negative review. Wow. Yeah, fuck that shit, man. You can't even say a fucking negative word about the game. Yes, let's proceed carefully so we don't lose our bearings. That's typical Disney for you, though. That's Disney for you, though. They don't let you say anything fucking negative about anything they do.
At least we know who will definitely be reviewing the game, guys. But gosh dang it, I've had so much fun playing it. I think I have the perfect reviewer for them. What exactly was Fred hoping to achieve through his coup d'etat? Yeah. Yep. Dude, this village design is fucking horrible. This game is horrible. Yeah, it definitely is not that great, bro. For sure. It is pretty mid. You can tell. Dude, I just want to finish it so then I can trade it in. I don't want to keep it. I want to get at least a decent value for it. Yeah, the Elder Scrolls background music is great. If you want me to switch the song, let me know if it gets annoying. It's surrounded by cliffs. I can put it on a different one. So it's hard to see and easy to defend. Because this has technically been on for two hours, even though it doesn't feel like it. Why I have the urge to finish. I just want to finish this game because I paid full price for it. So I just want to beat it and then be done. Then I won't feel like I got ripped off. If I paid like 15 bucks for it, I would have stopped playing a while. I mean, I got to say, this area that I'm in now is actually pretty visually nice, unlike the first, like, <laughs> two-thirds of the game, which is literally just a desolate wasteland with nothing to look at. Constantly going up and down all these hills really takes it Um, I don't think I would get more money if I sold it on eBay, because I think GameStop's having a 50% trade-in, so I'll get close to 40 bucks for it. And by the time I sell it on eBay, ship it, and then pay for fees, I'd probably be down to 40 bucks anyway, so. I'm just going to go buy another copy of uh, Final Fantasy Rebirth, bro, to add to my Reddit show. Keep up with you, or I'll see if they have anything else, but if not, that's what I'll just buy. Because I don't technically have a physical copy of Rebirth on my uh, gaming shelf, so... I gotta have Peak represented. Ferris of the Five, Everness has a 10 hour Oblivion music thing for the towns if you wanna switch. 
Um, possibly. I could do White Run next, which is what I was thought. Hold on, wait. No, there's one where it's like. Inherently results in a different ecosystem. Skyrim, Ambiance, White Run. And then it's like a combination of two. I don't know about that. Hold on. There's like I have it downloaded. I could pull it up. White run ambience. Could just put it on this for a little while. Just get dead on <laughs> fuck no. Absolutely not, bro. Dead Island 2 is trash. Vehicle level is too low. That's so fucking retarded. You have to have a certain level vehicle to equip a gun. Nah, I get paid immediately on eBay. I have like top rated plus or whatever the fuck the uh, seller level is because I sell a certain amount of stuff every year with them. So I get immediate payouts. I can even shop with my pending balance, which is typically what I do anyway on eBay. I'll just buy something with whatever money I get for selling something. We can't keep up with you, Prince. I have Immortals of Avium. They gave it away on PlayStation. Alright guys, apparently the Xbox memory card is on sale at Best Buy right now. The 2 terabyte one for 200 bucks. Or 220. That's like the cheapest it's ever been, so I don't know if anybody's interested in that. That's actually a pretty good price. I mean, that's like basically half off, so I don't really think it's going to get much cheaper than that. Down that 
Sometimes your detours hit pay dirt, Prince. Yeah, I still need to buy an SSD for PS5, but I don't know, bro. I feel like having a lesser amount of storage is helping me with a big problem I have, which is, you know, not just beating a game and then moving on from it. So I feel like if I have to manage my storage, you know, it keeps me on track to actually beat fucking games versus just having like 50 of them installed at the time. It actually like forces me to finish shit. Cause that's one of my biggest problems with gaming is I just don't finish things. Uh oh. Fuck. <laughs> How did that not kill me? Alright. I'll take it. Sony and Xbox both lost. Oh my god. Yeah, it is interesting though. We're like in a gaming downturn right now, which I think honestly is a good thing. Overall, I think it's a positive thing that gaming's in a downturn. Because dude, the industry fucking sucks right now, pretty much. All around. I guess I can't engage with them. Forest and army's no joke, down to the lowest grunt. Their soldiers must undergo extensive training. Yep, it does need a reset. We need a purge of the normies, though. Yeah, I'm not really excited for the DLC for Elden Ring, personally. I don't know. I don't really get excited for DLC. The fact that they made it, like, based on level scaling is fucking gay. Oh, are you fucking shitting me? A stealth mission? Fuck off, bruh. Seriously? I forgot how you even stealth. Okay. Oh my god. Dude, I fucking hate force stealth. Absolutely fucking hate force stealth. It's like literally one of the worst gaming tropes ever. Shit absolutely sucks. It adds nothing but frustration to the experience.
Dude, how the fuck am I supposed to sneak up on that retard? You can't even get the prop to kill him. Oh my god, bro. This shit is so ass. It wouldn't give me the prompt to fucking hit him. This is fucking garbage, man. Absolute fucking garbage. Dude, this is like some slop ass garbage, bro. Oh my god, bro, I got a trophy. No way, dude. Hell yeah. Alright, skip. Don't care. Uh let's go. Man with sweet rights. Griffin just needs some of synthetic man's white wine. That's a women's drink, dude. I'm not drinking white wine. White wine is for women. No thanks. I can't get this. Fuck off, dude. Seriously? No, red wine most women don't like. Most women don't like red wine because women are more sensitive to the tannins in red wine. Most women like white wine because it's less uh, bitter. Nah, my favorite types of wine are like a deep red wine, and I also like rosé, but I'm not really a white wine person. At all. Synthetic man likes sweet alcohol? That means he doesn't like alcohol. He just likes to get drunk. Hell yeah, dude, I freed my jail ho. Right. Go to the command center, dude. Alright, well now I shouldn't have to stealth, because, you know, I fucking freed the hoe. So they're not gonna execute her. Oh, more stealth? Are you fucking sh Dude, this is so gay. I'm just gonna see if I can run through this. Griffin likes to get drunk. Uh, I don't mind it. I just like, dude, I enjoy drinking personally, but I like alcohol. I don't have to like drink sweet shit or mixed liquor or any of that type of crap or beer. You know, I like actual like booze. I don't like the mixed shit personally. 
or extra sweet stuff. Like, sweet wines I absolutely despise. What's my go-to drink? Um, I like Hennessy VSOP. Patron Silver is good. Casanoble Añejo is good. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I like Scotch as well. Scotch is good. I hate bourbon because it has like that sweet taste to it. So I don't drink bourbon. Uh, not really a vodka guy either. I don't mind Jen. Jen's all right. Not my favorite though. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my go-to stuff. And then I like wines as well. I can drink wine like it's water. So, <laughs> dude, I can drink like two bottles of wine, no problem. No, I fucking hate sake. That shit's gross. Sake is disgusting. I hate beer. Beer is disgusting. I don't like like the uh, fucking white claws and shit like that with malt liquor. I fucking hate that shit. But yeah, I fucking hate beer with a passion, dude. Beer is like one of the most disgusting substances ever. That shit is so gross. Yeah, I like tequila, but it's gotta be like High quality tequila. Like Patron, Casanoble, that type of stuff. I don't like, like Jose Cuervo, for example, slop. That shit's gross. Yeah, beer is what you drink if you want something cheap to get drunk, I feel like. I don't know, man. I will pretty much just do anything to avoid drinking a beer. Like, I remember there was some work event we had, and, like, everybody went to, like, a brewery or some shit afterwards for like happy hour and it was like the easiest you know thing to turn down ever so I was like oh yeah I just don't drink beer see ya but yeah I fucking hate beer beer is disgusting yo what the fuck I got a fat suit Bro, Fallout Power Armor has nothing on this shit.
Boom. Griffin has no friends, pretty much, man. Sorry. I can live with that. I'm not trying online dating. I'm good. Anne's confession. Oh my god, dude. What was her secret? That she wants to plow me? Oh wow, what a shock. Riven has 200k subscribers, dude. What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> the fuck? Griffin, I don't think that you have tried dating. No, I haven't. <laughs> I'm too busy, uh... Gaming. I have zero desire, honestly, bro. That's not even, like, a thing at this point. Maybe at some point I will, but yeah, no. I'm good. Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. My favorite need. Well, I am employed. I'm done with education and I don't need training. So I don't really classify as a need, bro. Sorry. <laughs> I am both employed and educated. So therefore I can't really qualify as a need. You could say I'm a shut in, I guess. But even then I leave my place every day. So that's not really a great classifier either. can be a dink well I have to date somebody or I guess get married to be a dink I have to get married to a chick that has an, also has an income which I don't really care about personally yeah this is the Skyrim soundtrack yeah I'm a sink there you go a sink yeah not everybody watches the stream the entire time man the average view duration for a stream viewer is anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes typically on my stream. So people cycle in and out. I mean, I do the same thing. I'll watch like 25 minutes of somebody's stream and then go do something else. Or if I'm like taking a dump or some shit, I'll put on a stream in the background to listen to while I'm on the fucking can. Like, I don't know, man. Like, that's the way I consume content on YouTube. Not everybody just sits in a stream for like six hours. So that's normal. Griffin, you should try picking chicks up from her shift at the Xbox Studios. Those women will take anyone, knowing from experience. <laughs>
That looked more like a lion. Do you see Tippy calling Muda a Nazi? Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Nazis would have wanted Mudahar fucking exterminated. That's retarded. DJ Aftershock with the two, why don't you chug some Everclear then? Oh yeah, that's great. That or some Fireball, dude. Trey Cooper with the 38 months. I can only tolerate light beers like Coors Light. Yeah, I just, I don't like the taste of malt liquor. Whether it be beer, you know, those fucking hard seltzers, or just straight up malt liquor even. I just think it tastes gross. I don't know, I can't do it. Alright, let me fast draw. There you go. And Creator's Freedom with it too. How many games you got for next-gen consoles? Well, I don't have any physical games for Xbox anymore, but PlayStation, let me see. Sixty-seven PS4 and PS5 games physical. But that's not counting the games that I have in storage, too. How much to acquire your channel? I would probably sell my channel for 300,000. That would probably be my number to sell my channel. Nah, if I sold it for 300000 I could pay off, like, the majority of, like, that fucking investment property I have, so that would put me in a really good position financially. Because then that property would make me, like, three to $7,000 a month on average so that would just be pure profit once it's paid off which would pretty much cover you know a pretty big chunk of my uh, YouTube income and then I could always just do something else or just make another channel <laughs> there's also that Dude, I don't really even want a new car. That's the thing. It's like every car I want would be like 80 grand. And I don't drive enough to like actually justify it. It's not worth it. I literally drive to the gym and the grocery store, which are both like less than five miles away. There would be no point in me wasting money on a car. Probably fish. As well, given the easy access to the sea and river. I would do a different style of channel if I made another one today. Like, I would do like a more hybrid style gaming channel 
where it's like not just like commentary videos, but it would be like video game fucking like, I mean like collection kind of content, like all the 360 games I'm buying and investing in. I feel like that would be good content to do for like a gaming channel nowadays. Because a lot of people have interest in making money. So that type of content's kind of hot right now. If you make content about like investing in shit or, you know, monetizing your hobbies, so to speak. A Ford Focus? Nah. Dude, if I were to buy a car right now, I'd probably get like a fucking Tahoe or some shit like that. But yeah, I would do like a hybrid channel. So it would be like commentary videos, like game pickups slash investment videos. And, you know, news videos and things like that. Like, it wouldn't just be like, a, oh, this is a fucking thing going on in gaming. Here's my opinion on it. And that's it. Or we're shitting on a video or something. It'd be like a massive combination of everything. And then you just kind of stick to it until you start getting traction on it. I mean, that's the biggest thing with YouTube, is you just have to find something that works and then grind it out for a little while. We can't keep up with I gotta you, take this fucking mean shit, but I wanna get to this area first. Holy fuck, man. Oh, yeah, the stock market will def definitely fucking crash, man. The only reason the stock market like, has gone up is because... Of the only reason the stock market has gone up is because inflation has gone up dramatically. So people are dumping their money into the stock market because it's a hedge against inflation. Because, you know, companies raise their prices to, you know, counter inflation, therefore increasing their profits, which increases the stock price. And then more people dump their money into the stock market, which further inflates the stock price. And you have like a vicious cycle of the stock price just going up and up and up and up. The reason the stock market's going up is not because companies are doing better or the economy's doing better. It's just because nobody has faith in any other form of investment or, like, monetary vehicle right now. People are putting their money in things that are anti-inflationary, which is basically companies. So... But yeah, eventually something's got to give on that. If you look at the average, or not average, the total savings accounts balances in the U.S. over the past four years, they're down like 70%. So people don't have any money anymore. The only people with savings accounts are poor people. So the average person has less money today than they ever have. In like the past four or five decades, so yeah. Yeah, Bidenomics, baby. Dude, this region's really cool, though. I like the aesthetic. Is Sandland worth... Uh, if you can get it on sale, I wouldn't pay full price. Like, 20, 30 bucks, I think it's a go. But I wouldn't pay full price for this. I mean, it's not, like, the game's not bad. It's just very mid in a lot of areas. Like, it's fun at times. But it's not worth 60 bucks. It's like a 30 to $40 game at best. Yeah, NVIDIA's stock, I don't feel like, is a sustainable price.
I think people are getting a little too carried away on the AI hype. Did you guys hear that BlackRock and other like financial institutions are forcing the Ukrainians to start paying back debt now because they don't have faith that the Ukrainians are going to win the war anymore? So like all these loans and shit that were given out to Ukraine by BlackRock and other financial institutions, they're starting to demand uh, interest and debt repayment now because they don't have faith that, you know, the Ukrainian state is going to last. They're also on the two. How's the D-pad on the analog? It's really good. Dude, the analog, like, anything is really good. Like, they make high-quality stuff. Uh-oh. <laughs> Fuck. Am I really going to have to drive all the way back over? Fuck me, dude. Another jank-ass game with jank-ass railings. Yeah, the problem is with BlackRock's 10 trillion in assets is most of it's locked in index funds, which they have no direct control over. Like, if you buy a BlackRock S&P 500 index fund, they have to perfectly mirror that to the S&P 500. They don't have any sort of, like, you know, in, I guess, financial freedom when it comes to how they want to allocate that money. Now, if you buy, like, one of their growth stock funds or ESG funds or something like that, then they have direct control over how that money's spent. But if you have your money in, like, a BlackRock uh, S&P 500 fund, then they can't touch it, which is the majority of the money they manage. Yeah, I don't know how the fuck these retards thought Ukraine was going to pull this shit off. Well, Ukraine has already lost, man. Every time they try to do any sort of offensive against Russia, it fails, like, miserably. 
Anytime they actually try to do like a counter offensive, it's a miserable fucking failure for them. You know, they're talking about conscripting women now. Because, you know, they're running out of able bodied men. So, yeah, they're getting their fucking ass beat. I mean, they've been reduced to like a fucking almost less than third world shithole. It'll take them decades to recover if they even can. Well, we should actually support Israel, though. That's the thing. is like Israel at least is beneficial to us to have around. You know, they're the largest purchaser of U.S. military goods after uh, Taiwan. And then on top of that, they're basically our launching point for all of our Middle Eastern, you know, activities. You know, they're like our vassal state in the Middle East that does basically all of our dirty work for us. Like that shit where we, uh, or I guess not we, where Israel fucking hit that, uh, consulate or whatever and took out that Iranian military target. I guarantee you that was like some CIA op and we got Israel to carry it out for us. Cause that's typically how it goes is we don't directly do shit. We get like one of our fucking proxy kind of states to do it for us. They say Epstein's over there? I don't think so. He's probably in some like remote part of the world if he is still alive. Like on some fucking private island like Little St. James, but you know, one that nobody knows about. Nah, Israel spends more money in excess of what we give them. We don't really give Israel a ton of money on a regular basis, but Israel pays a lot of money to us for military goods. Also, we purchase a lot of uh, Israeli defense items too. Like, Israel has some really advanced military technology, as well as like AI and facial recognition and all that type of shit too. So they actually have a lot of really good technology we purchase as well, too, from them. All right, I got to go take a shit real quick, guys. I'm about to literally fucking burst. So I'll be back. Give me, uh, give me a few minutes. I'll be in the chat. to go in so deep that you can't touch the bottom, Prince. Uh-huh, thanks. Bots are generally no good in the water, either. You got it, okay? I know how to keep myself from drowning. Why do I have doubts?
a hovercraft. It'd break down before long, and you'd be stranded. I'd do a lot for you, but heading after you to fix it isn't on that list. <laughs> Maybe let's ditch the main one. Everybody in Forestland have bots or something? I seriously doubt that. Bots are expensive to buy and maintain. Yeah. Normal people couldn't hope to afford them. Only the army and the rich. Landscapes possible in an entirely different way from Sandler. The air around here is way too cold. Even the hides. Tell me about it. I've got a headache already. sorts of things on the sidewalks here. If no one ever comes by, never gets picked up after all. Wait, how did all this stuff get there in the first place then? Fell from the sky, maybe.
thought we'd end up in a different country. It's fun though. We've seen lots of cool stuff. I'll always treasure this time. Vegetation makes for easy ambushes. That's certainly something to keep in mind when in the jungle. You guys make it sound like there's an enemy up every tree and in every bush. In Sandwich, I thought there was one behind every rock or dune. of sharp turns on these mountains. If you're going to use a bot, please drive slowly. Hey, if we fall, we'll just deal with it. Are you crazy? Steep inclines around here. Bet you we could breathe right through them with one of our bots. There's nothing sweeter to a mechanic's ears than hearing that her babies are coming in handy. None of us can imagine our team without you. Check them out! Sure, but be careful. Dangerous creatures have a habit of making their homes here. Alright, I'm back, guys. Holy sh... <laughs> Damn! Alright. That was wild, bro. Griven has fallen? That's right. But at least I got up. Daryl's now with the five. I spent too much on Pokemon games recently. I'll probably pick up the analog pocket later down the road. I'm also broke like you, Griff. Yeah, that's true, man. I am broke. That's why I need everybody to... Uh... Open your wallet and give me all of your monies! Yeah, dude, it was a bowl fill. It was like one of those where you flush it the first time and it doesn't go down. You're like, oh, fuck. I might have to get the plunger, but luckily the second flush... Everything cleared. And let's find a path that'll take us that way. That was a battle, bro. <laughs> yeah, worse than the Melania fight in fucking Elden Ring. Oh, Coke is way better than Pepsi. Pepsi tastes like flat Coke. Let's hurry. Like, if you leave Coke out and it becomes unfizzy, that's what Pepsi tastes like.
Like, Coke has, like, a spice to it. Pepsi's just sweet. It's hard to describe, but, like, Coke has, like, that extra flavor element that gives it almost, like, a spice. It's not just, uh, sweet. Alright, I don't know why I'm gonna try to do that. That's gonna fuck me up. Yeah, Pepsi's gross, honestly. I, I don't like Pepsi at all. Coke is the OG, baby. Did you see Mudahar getting shit on for his- why is he getting shit on? Are the Truans upset? Like, oh my god, how dare you call out a trans content creator? I'm sure. Or, oh my god, they're getting death threats. It's like, good. Who fucking cares? Keffels tries to ruin other people's lives, so, you know, ruin his life as well. Who fucking cares? Thumbnail makes Keffels too masculine. Well, Keffels is a fucking man, so what do people expect? Keffels is literally a man in a wig, or I guess maybe his hair is long enough now that it's not a wig, but... Keffels just looks like a fat dude with long hair. Like, he doesn't even look feminine at all. Like, some of the trans bitches can somewhat pass as a woman. Like, Keffels just looks like an obese guy. He just looks like a fat guy. That's it. Looks like the type of guy that would work at GameStop, showers once a week, and wears a Super Mario t-shirt. And has like seven lanyards around his neck. Tell me I'm wrong, is that not the image of fucking uh, Keffels, dude? Uh, the Witcher 3 is like a 50 hour game. It's a long game, man. It's not short, if that's what you're looking for. It's a very long game.
Oh shit, all right. I don't even know why I'm going for that item. It's a green, so it's gonna be trash. Yeah, well, Keffels is a self-admitted groomer, so, you know, an irredeemable pedophile is never going to get sympathy from me. Like, Keffel's literally, like, has flexed the fact that he's, like, transitioned kids. So, you know, and he's a fucking drug addict, too, so. No sympathy from me. Yeah, I saw that Target's no longer selling LGBT branded shit because of the pushback. I'm glad people aren't fucking standing for that type of shit. It's fucking gross, man. Yeah, I've always liked Target personally. I like Walmart better, but I like Target as well. How the fuck do you like Walmart? Bro, they got everything there. They got, like, food. Like, I don't... Bro, like, what do they not sell at Walmart? That's the thing. It's like, you go to Walmart, you can always find something cool to buy. I love Walmart. As long as you don't live in, like, a really fucking ghetto-ass area, Walmarts are pretty cool. Yeah, I used to go to Walmart all the time with my mom as a kid. 
and she would buy me like fucking Pokemon cards and you know I would go and buy like fucking toys and shit like that whenever she was like shopping for groceries or whatever else so yeah dude Walmart was cool I don't have a Walmart near me at all the closest one to me is like literally in downtown DC which I'm not going to that shit is ghetto as fuck bro you take your life into your own hands <laughs> you step into fucking DC is Walmart, but yeah. Does Keffels even make money from content creation anymore? I'm not really uh, too familiar with them because, you know, I don't watch trans content, but I know I never thought like Keffels had a huge following or anything like that, right? And Keffels is literally unhirable because of all the grooming shit he's done, so. And all the internet controversy attached to. Oh, fuck off, dude. You can't jump while you drink a potion? Seriously? Oh my god. Dude, this game is like literally a PlayStation 2 game, but like the worst type. The really janky old ones with the fucking outdated mechanics. And I just... Fuck. Oh my god, bro. This is ass. Tipster defending. Oh, of course, dude. He wants to pound that fucking axe wound. He wants to get balls deep into that shit. Well, the thing is, Tipster has something in common with Keffels. Both of them can't see or feel their penis. Bruh.
they want you to platform on foot. Oh shit, man. You have to start all over? What the fuck? What is it with games forcing shitty platforming segments? They're gonna turn everybody off to potential like future platformers just from the shitty like iterations of this. Like most people because of shitty forced platforming segments would probably be completely against a platforming game coming out in modern year. Like, these sections of the game are by far the worst when you're in, like, these old fucking, like, spaceships. There's been, like, five or six of them so far that I've played, and they're just all boring as fuck. The ancient temples, at least, are more fun. But these segments are just, like, fucking trash. Um... Dude, I wish we could get another Spyro game. I would love to play another Spyro game. Zier with the two. Uh, where is it? Wait, what the fuck? Where is it? Oh, there it is. I'm just gonna say it, since you're talking shit about me with your big fucking ugly mouth, you're all hateful fucking racist bigots. Fuck you and fuck your fucking podcast. So Mongi with the five, what's up, Griffin? What game is this? This is called either, a either, either subscribe, land. donate, or get the fuck out. It's an adaptation of like a anime or manga franchise from the guy who made Dragon Ball. Ah. All right, why well, can't? Oh, it needs boxes. Of course, more padding. At least the boxes are right here. That was a fail. Oh, come on, dude. This game is so fucking jank. Pick it up. Holy shit. And Zherb with the five Xbox is dead and they kill themselves in Minecraft. Also saw a clip of RTU on streaming channel. Rich is still talking about quantity. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Why? Who the fuck cares about quantum TV? Leave that guy to fucking die in irrelevance. Nobody fucking watches him. Just let his ass fucking rot.
I guess Rich is like determined to turn the lolcal energy away from himself because he's been getting clowned a lot recently. Because, uh, you know, Andy Worski and, you know, that guy PPP on Kino Casino are making fun of him now. So I'm guessing he's, like, trying to turn the negative attention away from himself. But yeah, I watched one of their fucking videos on Rich, and it was pretty funny. Like, from their clip channel or whatever. Yeah, Andy looks a lot better now. Because, like, the last time I saw him... He looked like fucking shit because he was addicted to cocaine. <laughs> so I'm guessing he's clean now because he looks a lot better. And that was what was funny too, was like they were calling out Rich for being a pot addict, which is so true, man. He's a weed addict. Like his entire personality on stream has shifted to obsessing over the fact that he's stoned. Yeah, bro, you could literally have convinced me that Quantum TV doesn't even fucking exist anymore. I haven't heard a word about him. Alright, why can't I not activate this? So, there we go. Hopefully I'm almost done with this segment, man. This shit's boring as fuck. The engine room at last. Oh, finally. Yeah, I don't understand making drug addiction your entire personality first. I'm not an addict, so... That's probably why. This thing's strong. I hate how this game doesn't have auto reload on your weapons. It's such a lazy fucking development decision. Like, look at that shit. It didn't auto-reload my thing. It's fucking irritating. Um... I didn't do damage? Why 
can I not restore health? Oh, really? My fucking teammates glitched over there? So, like, I have a support skill and he's fucking glitched. He's not moving. <laughs> That's nice. There we go. Now he's attacking. Why can I not use the fucking healing items? Jesus, dude. This boss fight fucking sucks, dude. This is so fucking boring. Oh my god, man. Why can I not heal? Holy shit, dude. This game is so fucking just jank. Like, I have to reopen the menu in order to use the same fucking item I'm trying to use. And again, my guy's not getting in this tank. Oh, he can't help right now, even though the fucking skill is available. That's nice. Yeah, the tank fucking glitched, man. Alright, there we go. I can summon it again. Thank you. Because it's not just the tank that helps. It, like, diverts his attention, too. Which is more beneficial than the actual damage.
Dude, does this look I, I, like this is fucking boring, man? I don't know. This is just like lame as shit. He's way too spongy. Souls and that, yeah, something like that. Look at that shit. He just ate all those shots and they did no damage because of the fucking animation he was in. That's fucking fair. That makes sense. I wish I was the fucking spongy one, bro. I'm having to use health kits out the fucking ass. I can't use another one for whatever reason. There we go. Finally, dude. Really follow through on that promise. <laughs> that was fucking miserable. Kind of a way. That was a waste, bro. That was a literal fucking waste. A waste of a boss fight. So Ferris of the Five, Keffles is pissy over the thumbnail when he does the exact thing. Yeah. What is the thumbnail even? Just a picture of him? We're the first ones to the engine room. And Zero of the Five, Xbox died with the X-Bone. Phil couldn't recover it. It's been Microsoft Gaming ever since, and even that been trapped. The thing is, is Phil could have recovered it. It's just he didn't have the skill set. Or the pulse, or a finger on the pulse of what the gaming community wanted. I mean, he tanked Halo and Gears under his watch, so that's on him. That's got nothing to do with the platform. That's got to do with his shitty oversight as the head of Xbox. And Timothy Marco with the seven, you hear that some Harvard academics want fossil fuel companies to be prosecuted for climate related deaths. I wish they were climate related deaths. But that'd be too easy, right? And Claw's Mystery of the Twenty, here's a joke, an MCU tart that criticizes. You mean one that doesn't just consume Ze Slop? Good luck. Here's the thumbnail. <laughs> that's fucking funny. I mean, it's obviously just a fucking caricature, but that's pretty spot on. Doesn't he do like everybody in his thumbnails like that, though? Like, it's an art style, obviously. But yeah, that's pretty accurate for the Keffel's look. That's almost flattering.
And Ferex with the five. Oh, you can tell that boss was designed by Akira Toriyama. It's literally the pirate robot from OG Dragon Ball. Yup, he definitely has a uh, very recognizable style, that's for sure. Alright, what's in this box? Jet Thruster. Oh, nice, a purple. Overcar. Finally, I get to fucking leave this place. This shit sucks. I hate these segments of this game. I heard that Fist of the North Star game is actually pretty good. Yo, I wonder if that's like a valuable game. Yeah. Holy shit, yeah. The blue label variant is like 50 something dollars. Alright, I just bought the PS4 version of it. I found one for 30 bucks. I forgot about that game. I remember hearing about how good it was back in, like, back in, what, like, 2015, 16, maybe? Uh, it's not a link, it's just an individual copy. I mean, if you want, you can just find it on eBay if you just want to... If you don't care about the PlayStation Hits variation, I just hate the red cases. But it was just an individual eBay listing that I just bought. I just don't like the red case. The red case triggers my OCD. Yeah, that's a pretty valuable game, man. That's pretty crazy. Oh, there's somebody who put it in a blue case, so you don't have to look at the fucking red. That's nice. Somebody's in Oh, wow. What the fuck? Hold on. There you go. There's a copy. But it's the PlayStation Hits cover art, but it doesn't have the red case. Somebody replaced the case, which is nice.
You love the red case? Hey, man, you know, it is what it is. There are people who collect, like, the PlayStation hits, like, variations of games. Some of them are really valuable if they were short printed. Yeah, I heard that Fist of the North Star game was really good. I never got around to playing it, but I remember hearing specifically that it's a fun action game, so I'll give it a shot. I got it at a great price, so worst case is I can always sell it and make money. DJ Aftershock of the Five, a great hypothetical Star Wars game mission, is a no Russian style mission where an extremist rebel cell dresses as Imperials and mass murders. Yeah, that shit would be kind of cool. Either that or you get to play as Anakin killing the young ladies. <laughs> that would be another uh, good substitution, too. I don't like PS2 cases. PS2 cases to me just look like regular DVD cases. They don't look like video game cases. They look like movie cases. I think the 360 has the most iconic game case, personally. Like that green plastic, bro. Like, chef's kiss. That shit looks so good. Like that fucking clear green plastic just really contrasts well against the white label up top. I don't know, man. 360 games pop. I love. That's why I like getting graded 360 games over PS3 is because the cover art is not only larger, but it just pops, dude. It looks really nice. Skip. Bro, you have to travel so fucking far in this game for no reason. I just went like 4,000 fucking meters, and now I have to go another 2,000. Also, the other thing I don't like about PS3 cases is the fact that they have that stupid fucking clear plastic area up top that looks really bad. <laughs> it looks terrible. Like, it's just literally wasted plastic. It's like, why is it even there? It just looks like crap. Because it yellows over time, too, so it's like, you know, cheap looking. I like the PS4 and PS5 cases. I think the PS5 ones look better because of that white label up top. It looks really good. I don't like Xbox's Xbox One cases. I think the Xbox One cases were ugly. Their Series X cases look a lot better because they don't have that empty fucking plastic area up top. Thank you for coming. With the cheap fucking paint that chips and like is imperfect.
Uh, let's see. Daryl Zone, the two. Okay, just bought Analog Pocket. Damn you, Griffin. I, it's a great... I mean, dude, it's a good investment to have. I mean, if you can get it now for retail... Because once analog stuff sells out, they have, like, an insane resale value to them, too. So if you can get it direct from them at retail price, I don't think you're going to regret it. Because, you know, you'll have it forever, and it's a great way to play the Game Boy games natively if you want to. It's, like, the best Game Boy clone console from everything I've heard. That's why I bought one. All right, let me go. Actually, I need to buy more repair kits. For this guy. There we go. Thank you for coming. What? Uh, Daniel with the 5 Crab Souls game just crashed and I lost 12 hours of gameplay on PS5. Manual save frequently, everyone. It's a great... Dude, that fucking blows. So it doesn't auto-save at all? That's fucking wild for a game in 2024. Even the Souls games had auto-save. That's pretty crazy. Oh, so because it crashed, it deleted your own. Yeah, that's fucking gay, man. That sucks. Yeah, I didn't mind the original Xbox, uh, whatever, Platinum Hits case. I thought those looked good, but I hate the 360 ones. 360 Platinum Hits cases look like shit. Because they have that really bland fucking side label that's just white and black text with no actual, like, game logo, and it has that ugly gray fucking 360 thing. I refuse to buy Platinum Hits for, um, 360. I like the original Xbox Platinum Hits, though. I think those look good. Because they still maintain the actual, like, spine graphics, so it doesn't look out of place on your, you know, gaming shelf. You know, you still have, like, the actual logo, but for 360, they fucking, you know, put, like, this bland-ass white and then black text on there that just looks so out of place. So, yeah, I refuse to buy any Platinum Hits games for 360. They just look bad. HCM 101 the 5, what's up, Griffin? Have you seen Marvel Rivals like Paladins and Overwatch? Looks cool as fuck. All she should try Ultra Age. It's a, basically the Ultra Age. Yeah, somebody recommended that before. Wow. So you're like the 
original I don't think, yeah. Oh, fuck, I can't remember if I ever looked that up. I'm gonna write it down. I think, uh, who was it that recommended that? Somebody in this chat. Yes, it was you, DSP's incident. I wanted to say DSP tries it, but it didn't sound right. Hey, we're not monsters. Keep us out of your dumb wars. But yeah, the Marvel Rivals thing, I don't really have any desire to give Disney any sort of money, personally. Plus, I heard that whole shit about if you play the early access or whatever, you forfeit your right to say anything negative about the game whatsoever. Which is pretty wild. You have to sign a non-disparagement agreement to get early access to it. General Crowa. Yeah, hold on. It wasn't I Siler sent it earlier. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, I'll link it for you guys. Yeah, here you go. There you go. But yeah, creators who get a code for it literally have to sign a non-disparagement agreement, which means you cannot say shit about that game. Negative. Uh, they can sue you, basically. Nope, don't believe the reviews at all because they're most likely completely fake. You can't say anything negative about it. Yeah, it's typical Disney, man. That's par for the course for them. Alright, let me go back down. So DJ Aftershock with a 2, imagine Disney's reaction to that mission. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they would love that. Dude, this walk and talk segment is fucking obnoxious. Xbox died since 2013. Nah, Xbox was still good until like 2015, I feel like. They had some really good shit at the beginning of the Xbox One generation game-wise, man. I enjoyed my Xbox One at the beginning of the generation. I hated towards the middle and, like, end. And then this generation's been fucking garbage, but... The Xbox One at the beginning of the gen was actually really good. I enjoyed it a lot. They had really good games. Oh my god, bro. This dude's hard to hit. There we go. Well, where that came from? That all? There we go. Oh my god. Fuck, dude. It doesn't help that your tank shoots like at fucking one mile per hour with the shot. Dude, boss fights in this game just are not fun. They're fucking tedious as shit. Like, this isn't difficult, it's just irritating.
Like, why does my gun shoot at three miles per hour, bro? It's a fucking, like, tank shell. That thing should be cooking through the air. Have I thought about shooting faster? I'll give it a try. Thanks for the uh, advice. That's very helpful. This is, so ass. this is absolute ass, bro. Oh my god. And of course, it's like hitting him with a fucking spitball. Yeah, I was so unsatisfied with the PS4's game lineup. Like, a year into the generation, I bought a uh, Xbox One in 2014. Because they actually had good fucking games. PS4 had jack shit for the first half of the generation. But Xbox One had some really solid stuff. Like Titanfall, Sunset Overdrive, Forza Horizon, Rise of the Rome, Dead Rising, fucking uh, Killer Instinct. What else? They had something else, too. I'm forgetting. Yeah, they had, like, a lot of really cool games, man. Like, PlayStation had nothing until fucking Bloodborne. That was it. And then Infamous Second Son. Which, Infamous Second Son was, like, six hours, so... I mean, it would help. I just was getting pelted there. Bro, this is so ass. Come on, dude. Just make the stop already. This is not even fun. It's just boring. At least you can actually hit him when he does the... Fucking finally, man. I had to go all the way out there for that. A fucking boss fight that wasn't even a guy I killed. Yeah, I've upgraded my vehicles. I can s check if I can, but I don't think I have any upgrades. Uh, parts. Any parts. Let's see. Is that better than what I have now? Actually, let me just do it. I'll get
My vehicle level is too low. So I have to upgrade my vehicle. Upgradable. I need croc out. <laughs> Oh, customize vehicle. I don't know where the fuck you get that. Let me see if I can buy it over here. Nope, nobody sells quartz, bro. Jump. Can upgrade that too. All right. Good. Can upgrade some stuff. But. Yeah, I mean, vehicles are, like, the whole point of this game. But the upgrades are pretty marginal. They're not really... They're, they're kind of irrelevant. They don't do anything. Your level seems to be more important. I haven't ever noticed a big difference in upgrading my vehicles. Personally. But... Yeah, the boss fights fucking suck, dude. They're awful. Why can't I buy anything from him? <laughs> okay, that's already fast really. I wish it was Dragon Quest. This is Sandland. Dragon Quest is much better. It's not a very secret passage. It's like literally out in the open. 
Wait, why did I need a secret passage to go into the capital? I've already been in here. Alright, skip. I don't fucking care. For prior to the coronation, we Not a chick! Hell yeah, dude. We gotta save the king. Here you go! Nope, we gotta save the king from the execution. Alright, skip. I don't fucking care. <laughs> Look at this amazing combat, bro. <laughs> oh, dude. This shit is slop. This is like Japan slop, bro. This is the prime example of Japan slop. Alright, I just have to escape, so. Dodge roll to victory. Hell yeah, dude. They can't hit you in a dodge roll at all. Like, you're literally invincible if you just do this. Alright, that's good. I don't care. Oh, wait, what's that? Now I can talk to the peddler. This is the uh, White Run theme. Streets of White, yeah, Streets of White Run. I think is what it's called. Nah, I'm probably not gonna review it. I'm just gonna. I just want to beat it so I can trade it in. Like I just bought this game to try, but I kind of want to finish it just so I can say, yeah, I beat it. And not feel like I got completely ripped off, but yeah. I'm not gonna do a uh, review on this game. I don't think anybody cares about this game. It came out the same day as Stellar Blade, so it kind of died. In terms of any interest people had. Because most of the weebs, bro, that would be interested in this type of shit would have bought, you know, Stellar Blade instead. Head for oh you can't fat dude this is so fucking padding bruh I have to go back to the main camp and they're gonna make me drive all the fucking way back even though I literally have a fast travel point to the fucking camp bullshit man yeah this is a newer game it came out the same day as Stellar Blade Yeah, this game has a lot of fucking padding. At least I can fast travel here. Yeah, so I can fast travel to all the points in between, but not the place I need to go. <laughs> Bruh. Modern gaming, baby. 
Peak modern game design. No, no. You can't do it in a hovercraft. It'd break down before long, and you'd be stranded. I'd do a lot for you, but heading after you to fix it isn't on that list. Well, this is their anime slop team developing <laughs> this, not way. the Tails team. The Tails team, I think, is a separate team. I don't really want to play the new COD in all honesty. I mean, I might buy it just to review it, but honestly, I'm not a Black Ops fan anymore. I haven't enjoyed a uh, Treyarch COD since Black Ops 2, pretty much. Black Ops 3, 4, and Gulf War, I felt were really bad. So, I've never really been a huge Treyarch fan. I've always been more of an Infinity Ward guy. Creator's Freedom of the Two, thank you. Wait, thank for playing Sandland. Do not suffer too long. That's the idea, man. I'm just trying to finish it up at this point. This has to be the SAO game team if it's slot, probably. Maybe I should buy an SAO game to try. <laughs> that would be fucking funny. Those games are horrid, man. Absolutely fucking horrid. I'm sure they're like five or ten bucks on eBay. They gotta be dirt cheap. They're not good games at all. The one thing I will say is I do think the graphics are very nice on this game. But holy fuck, the game, like, the gameplay loop and padding and open world design is terrible. But the game looks really good in this area. Like, I think it does well with the, like, anime-ish kind of art style and shit. Like, I think the textures and everything look good. I like the aesthetic of the game. But that's really about it. The gameplay is really fucking boring. Yeah, the Attack on Titan games are pretty good. I like the first one better than the second one, though. Roads well maintained, but trees jut out over it and obstruct the view. Some if you want to drive, do it with care. Keep us charging off a cliff, Theo. And Oski Oski with the five. God, hearing this music is gonna make me miss the composer even more. Whoever the new guy is, he has big shoes to fill. I wish him or her good luck. Yeah, exactly. It's not gonna be the same. Like, they'll do an effort to, like, try and clone the music, but it just, it won't have the same soul. The Elder Scrolls music is, like, one of the best fucking parts of the game, hands down. It's what made the world feel so alive. Come on, hang in there! And that entire aspect now is gonna be gone. SAO is like $30. Which one, though? Which SAO game? Like, the new one, I'm sure, is probably like 30 bucks. But, like, the one I used to have was called, I think, Hollow Realization or some shit like that. Came out on the PS4. That was the one I played, and it was really bad. Just let me kill the fucking enemy. Why did it take me out of my tank? What the fuck? Bro, I was already in my tank. Why did it take me out? They think I'm going to punch some vehicles? to 
catch them, or we're in big trouble. Go after Epi. Well, the creator of Dragon Ball made this franchise, and he basically just clones his characters from, you know, series to series, so... It's the reason why characters look the same. Bro, why is it taking me out of my vehicle? I'm fighting tanks, and it takes me out of my tank. Why? What the fuck? I don't need a cutscene every time I encounter enemies that puts me out of the fucking vehicle I need to get back into. See, it's like obnoxious fucking elements like that that make this game miserable to play. Hey, man, any tips for fighting in a Another fucking cutscene, bro. Holy shit. Stop taking me out of my fucking tank. Holy shit, dude. Stop! I just stopped the villain. All right, fuck off. It took, bro. It it puts you in a boss fight and takes you out of your vehicle, motherfucker. Why? This game is fucking retarded. Like, oh yeah, you're about to fight a fucking vehicle boss. Now you're out of your vehicle. So get fucking wrecked, nerd. Oh, is my fucking weapon saving? What the fuck? I can't go. Oh my god, they have the boss arena locked off. Dude, this game is so shit. This game is absolute shit, bro. You can't even maneuver around him and flank him properly. He's so annoying. No, this game is not Oh, my weapons to say. Good. 
All right. Scoop. Return to Sandland. Hell yeah, dude. All right, well, where's Sandland? Oh, okay. This is Ralph. General Ari. You been playing nothing but JRPG. I don't blame you, man. That's mainly what I've been playing, too. Pre-spectoration. That's good. Can you upgrade her so she gives... Technically, she's your uh, niece in this game. Buff her titties? That's right, bro. Scoop. Yeah, so basically, she's the daughter of the real king and the demon Lilith. And you are the son of Satan, and Lilith is your sister, basically. It's fucking retarded, man. The story to this game is stupid. Griffin wants to return to Zion? Exactly, dude. I need my Ashkenazi mommy. that. 
Probably just have to fight the different tanks and shit. Damn, that thing has no range. I guess because it's a heavier fucking thing. At least it melts. Easy enough. Uh, let me go get the uh, equipment. DJ Nanscape with the five. I gotta say, why do Japanese writers make stories and video games so complex that you need to either connect the dots to play or play Guess Who? Because they like ambiguous storytelling, basically. The Japanese love ambiguous storytelling. I don't understand why, but it's like just a common thing with most of their media. This game is very slow. It's slower than a retarded kid in a fucking math class. Hell yeah. Pew, 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 pew. That new machine gun I got is like fucking crazy good at least. Oh god, a jack-in-the-box twink walked into my work, <laughs> bro. The M1 Abrams? For real, man. That'd make this shit a lot more interesting. It's slower than Tipster walking up a flight of stairs. God damn. Bruh. Well, the Japanese constantly sequel bait. That's the other thing, too. Like, look at anime, dude. Like, fucking Naruto did not need to be a thousand fucking episodes. Neither the fucking One Piece. Bleach was going on and on for fucking ever. Like, they like to leave their franchises open for these fucking sequels. So, that's the other aspect, too. Is, you know, they don't like closing a storyline because then it cuts off their ability to continue to monetize it forever. Griffin loves bleach. What a fucking weeb. That's right, dude. Arigato. Yeah, guys, I'm gonna go to Japan and go bang some Japanese women because Western women are literally ruined, dude. Japanese women will appreciate me for me and won't just want me for my money. Even though we have nothing in common and don't even share a culture, they obviously have more pure intentions.
Meanwhile, Japanese women hook up with Westerners because they can have an affair with no real consequences because they know you're going to leave the country and won't stick around. <laughs> Yeah, Ichigo's sword has a fucking swastika hilt. But that's because it's a Hindu symbol. It's not actually the Nazi symbol. There are swastikas all over Japan, if you look. Because, you know, it's like a spiritual symbol in Asia. It has nothing to do with the Nazis. Damn, bro, I would fucking... Never mind. Intrusive thoughts, stay inside. Dude, I'm gonna fix her first. Alright, let me go back to shooting the fucking tank, man. Why'd they take me out of the boss battle? Oh my god, you didn't even get to finish the boss fight. That's so lame. Let me guess, you have to do it later. Yeah, I, I really don't give a fuck what's happening in the story at this point. I have no investment in it. It's really irritating. What now? Are you gonna go see Ari right away? No. We should really take a short break, too. Let's do I wanted to slap that blue hair bitch's cow titties, but nope. I wanted to make her my prisoner of war and breed her, dude. Brian Miller with the five. Hey Griffin, it's my birthday today. Happy birthday to you, man. I got Stellar Blade and Final Fantasy 16, which I'm enjoying a lot. Very cool, dude. Happy birthday to you, man. Hopefully you're uh, doing some fun stuff today for it. But big ups, my guy. They took my blue-haired baddie and my boss fight away from me. I'm gonna fucking cry. No busty ladies from I don't know, man. It's a shame. We were this close to greatness, guys. Alright, let's hop back in the tank. The shitty bleach game? I need to buy a PS3 if I want to do that.
shit. Wait, it can block tank rounds? Okay, I was about to say. Killed them all. Nice. Um, faster up here. See, this part of the game's not too bad. I'm still pissed about my boss fight, but like going and just killing like tanks and shit is fine. I don't mind this part. Griffin only watched Bleach for the tits, bro. Only one character had tits. Well, nah, there were several. But, I don't know, bro. My favorite chick from uh, Bleach was Rukia, and she didn't have tits, so. Get wrecked, libtard. Wait, I just got a new item. Um, my vehicle level's too low. Are you shit? That is so gay, dude. Why am I getting equipment I can't even equip? That's so homo. L take rookie is mid. Mm, no. Well, that's okay. You can be wrong, you generation. That just means less competition. For true peak female character design. Yeah, I bet you like Yuroichi, you furry fuck. Bet you want her to stay in her cat form too, huh? Who's better, Sakura or Hinata? That's um, that's like a battle of the mid, bro. I mean. Obviously, Hinata is better than Sakura, but not by much.
destroyed. Griffin loves flat, chestless chick. Dude, I don't like big tits. Sorry. Like, I'm not a tits guy. At all. I'm not a big titty fan, personally. I don't know how clear I have to make this shit, bro. I'm not in the fucking milk jugs. They don't do anything for me. I don't know how many times I had to spell this out for you. Dude, I have to do the exact same thing over again? Really? Why didn't they just give me all seven of them at once? Now I have to do it again. Holy shit, dude. This game is so fucking... <laughs> it's just like... It is a time waster game. It's literally the exact same objective. Forest Land Army Supply Base, three out of three. Forest Land Army Supply Base, zero out of four. Like... This is pure padding at this point. Yeah, that's really good, man. But, I'm probably not a high enough tank level. Yeah, you need a level 19 tank. <sighs> Level-based fucking vehicle equipment, bro. Make sure Gaming. Check your gear every now and then. Never know when something is picked up. Might come in handy. That's a waste to let bot parts just rush away. How close am I to being done? Tell me. 87%? Oh, I'm almost done. Nice. This is the thing I like about PlayStation, too, is they have that feature where it basically tells you how much percentage of a game you're through, which is a really cool feature. So you know, like, how much you have left.
Oh, can't equip it. A level 24 piece of tank equipment. Why is it giving me shit that I can't use for eight more vehicle levels? Bro, give me some shit I could use now. I don't need something I could use in eight fucking upgrades. It's irritating. <laughs> All right, so I can't do anything over there. So I need to go over here. Like, what good does that fucking do me, man? Bro, it didn't clear that? Oh, fuck me, bro. Come on. I have to go back over there now. Great. Nice, dude. Gaming. I think this game's on Xbox. Griffin loves small breasted bitches because it has midget hands. Nah. I just think, uh, I mean, typically small breasted women are skinnier, and I like skinny chicks, bro. Sorry. I apologize for my preference. I hope you can forgive me. Plus, I'm not a fan of the sag either, so, you know. Yeah, that was really necessary. I had to come over here to kill four fucking random enemies. You know, time well spent. Um, I don't know if I can get... Trump pans, exactly. DJ Neon Scape with the two. I like medium melons and a gym bot or a gym booty. Facts, bro. Absolutely. And Michelle Soguchi with the two. Your response to Griffin is locale allegations. Uh, they're probably right. I don't think anybody should take me seriously. We keep our distance hey. from the army base unless necessary. Nice. One down. I'm just here for the shits and giggles, dude. I'm a part of Lol Cow Live. Not yet, bro. Yeah, I had some ultra autist when I was watching one of Synthetic Man's streams once who was like angry over the fact that I gave, uh, I guess money during one of the, uh, Lil Cal live streams. Like he was like really fucking ass blasted about it. It was funny. He was like, oh my God, you gave money to a fucking guy who said that the age of consent should be 12. It's like, oh my God, bro. Fucking sad, dude. And then he blocked me because I started shit talking him in the chat. And then I switched accounts and I started seeing his messages. I'm like, yeah, that dude's a massive fucking pussy. 
Like, he's talking shit about me and then blocks me so I can't see him talk shit about me. What an absolute fucking pussy, dude. What an actual fucking pussy. Like, how big of a bitch do you have to be to talk shit about somebody and then block them so they can't see that you're talking shit about them? Like, oh my god, bro. That's like a different level of bitch made. Alright, I don't know how I'm supposed to get over there. It looks like I have to go, like, over here to get into, like, that area. I don't fucking know, man. We'll see. It's a process. Um, she's up. <laughs> 8 bit Eric energy? Yeah, for real. Talk all that shit, but then when you get a chance. To fire off. It's like, well, that's also review tech energy too. When he got in the call with Melanie Mack, you know, he talks a lot of shit about her, and then you know, once he finally mics up, it's like, oh, uh, well, actually, I would defend your right to say what you say. <laughs> it's like, bro, what? You called her a hateful cunt, like. Dare I say it, hateful cunt. Like, bro, where was that energy, man? I don't know, man. Dude, that's the thing with me. At least I would be consistent. Like, if I don't like you, I'll let it be known. In person and on fucking stream. But then again, I don't take most of this shit personally either. So I'm not out here, you know, fucking fighting the good fight. I'm just here for a couple, you know, quick laughs. Dude. It ain't that serious. I don't think I genuinely hate anyone for the most part that I've interacted with online. Hey, at least that was sort of fun. You don't hate the black console chick? No. On some level, I feel bad for people like that. They have a miserable fucking existence where they hate themselves and think they're victims. I love myself and think I'm a winner. So, you know, couldn't be me. Do I prefer short women? Um, uh, medium or tall, personally. Like, the tall, slender build on a chick, I feel like is, like, peak, personally. But I'm not really too partial on height. It doesn't really matter that much. That's not that big a deal. I'm a face over everything type of guy, personally. Like, as long as she has a nice face, I really don't care. Like, that's the main physical attribute I give a shit about, is, like, face. Everything else, I don't really care. I mean, obviously not fat, but that's a given, because that's included in face. But, you get the point. Like, I'm not really obsessed with tits, ass, height, or any of that shit. More so just face. That's a very large panther. The Lion King, dude! <laughs> Why is that called a panther? That literally is a fucking lion, dude. I guess the Japanese failed basic fucking ecology. They can't identify animals.
fire, Leo. Watch out for rapid strikes. I think it would be best to stay out of it for a third ring. DJ and Eonscape are the two people who are YouTubers need to get real jobs. I think a lot of people who do, yeah, content creation full time lose touch with reality. I mean, the internet world is so fucking retarded compared to the real world, man. I would never want to be, like, solely existing online. This shit would be miserable. Griffin wants a girl with Raven's looks. Hell yeah, dude. And DJ Neonsuke with the two people who are YouTubers need to get real jobs. Oh, send it twice. Yeah, I don't know, man. I This has never been an aspiration for me to be a full-time content creator. It never even crossed my mind to do that shit. It's a great hobby, and it's fun to do in my free time, but it is not my fucking means of an income, and I never want it to be. Prince, I found the radio tower. I didn't double dip. He sent it twice, man. I was forced to double dip. I didn't hit both of them. Yeah, I don't know. Like, personally, maybe it's just me, but if a chick is taller than me, it's almost kind of hot. I don't know. Like, there's something very attractive about really tall chicks. More so than, like, shorter ones, but in, like, a different way, if you know what I mean. But, yeah, I don't really care about height. Height is not that big a deal. Maybe it's like the identification of, you know, D1 genes. You know, you can have a fucking uh, athlete in the family. have my game headphones on but does this game even have music <laughs> isn't taylor swift tall uh i don't know she looks like she would be i don't know how tall she is she's 5'10 so yeah she's pretty tall for a girl Most women are like what five five, five six is like the average height. Well, I start by observing them carefully. Knowing what they can do and what their weaknesses are will help you fight effectively. DJ Neonscape with the five. Let's just say when I'm going to work and speak to people, they say people who YouTubers they acted and they tell their kids not to look up. Yeah, exactly. 
Being a social media influencer is not an aspiration you should have in life. It should be a byproduct of your other successes. But it should not be your main fucking, you know, goal. Like, you know, the most popular jobs in China now are like engineer, astronaut, scientist, doctor, that type of shit. Number one career path for kids now in the US is I wanna be a YouTuber. Like, that's fucking horrible, man. That is absolutely fucking horrible. Check your gear every now. Yo, I just got a yellow item. I guarantee you I can't use it. Yeah. <laughs> level 25, dude. Why is it giving me this shit? I'm not level 25. I'm level 19. Holy fuck, bro. That's so irritating. Like, just give me some stuff I can actually use. to go back over here and Michelle Suguchi with the two imagine DSP's resume <laughs> yeah full time content creator and positivity merchant Griffin wanted to be like Keemstar but he failed bro I have never wanted to be a content creator professionally at all I would not enjoy it after a while, and I would hate the fact that I have to do it. <laughs> Bankruptcy expert, that's right. Are you going through bankruptcy? Trust someone who's been there too. Dark side Phil. You don't have the patience to be a content creator? Why is that? Hey. And of course they turn off that fast. <laughs> of course, 
dude. Don't have to engage every last enemy. Well, let's go. Yeah, it's just pretty Don't wild that DSP managed enemy. to become a bankrupt after Get making thirty thousand dollars a year with absolutely zero fucking different. assets. That is an accomplishment, man. That is like an actual fucking accomplishment. How do you make 30 grand a month for like years and walk away with zero fucking assets? You didn't even pay off your $80,000 condo. You didn't pay off your $300,000 house. Like, that's fucking pathetic. Yeah, that's what I think too. He had a gambling addiction. That's the only way you can burn through that much money without any sort of, like, assets. Because if he was, like, buying expensive cars, you know, luxury item. Bro, are you fucking shit? Another stealth mission, dude. Fuck this game, bro. Oh, my God. I can't take this shit no more, man. Holy fuck. Another stealth mission. Jesus Christ. They're just trying to piss you off at this point. DJ Nianske with a five. My career is to become a developer to make my company and hopefully one day become a PlayStation headquarters for their FPS games. Very nice, man. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have, like, the creativity to, like, design shit, personally. I definitely don't have that talent. I'm a good, like, ideas, I guess, person, but not, like, the fine details. Dude, the stealth in this game is absolutely fucking horrible. Why? You can't even approach an enemy. Look how fucking slow you walk. So definitely can't go that way. Oh my god, dude! 
This is insufferable. This is literally fucking insufferable, man. This is absolute fucking goy slop at this point. How did they get down here? Just a oh my god, it's the Kang, dude! Father! <gasps> uh. You're still just as clumsy. <laughs> as you used to be. <sighs> Do you know? Dude, he almost looks like a buff Hitler from the side. I failed to recognize my one and only daughter. Father! You're all grown up now. I'm so happy that you're alive. Me too, Father. Thank goodness. Yeah, her dad is like the real Kang or some shit of the Forest Kingdom. Oh, now they have fucking mind control powers and just gave the fucking, uh, nuclear whatever shit to him. Just shoot him again. Well, there. Don't go getting any funny ideas. <sighs> I can have you covered. <laughs> this game is so fucking retarded. Oh my god, man. Yeah, the Skyrim soundtracks in the background. Stay the fuck back. All right, now y'all get to see the top tier melee combat, dude. Hell yeah, dude. Look at that. Oh, yeah. I'm beating the shit out of them. Here I go. Oh, look, he dodged.
I I don't know if it's a guy or a girl. I can't hear the voice, so no clue. I just imagined it was an effeminate twink. I haven't listened to the game audio in this game at all ever since the first time I played it, so I don't know what most of these characters sound like. I'm here too, you know. DJ Neonscape with the five, if I was head for FPS games, I would get the Bungie and Sledgehammer my team to revive Killzone and make it uh, our own COD by releasing it every year. Yeah, the problem with Killzone is they need to do a gameplay overhaul, especially after Shadowfall. That shit was so fucking slow compared to three. But yeah, honestly, Killzone is an underutilized franchise. If DSP were playing the slop, he'd receive zero <laughs> tips. Maybe, man. That was close, Prince. Oski Waski with the two. Not Same. Right. What's this? I thought I told you not to come out here again. Take this. Uh uh, I'll pull this up in a second. Let me skip this stupid fucking... I don't want to have to sit there. Reunion? Hell yeah, dude. Alright, I'm almost done. Trophies. Flying Fortress, Garam, and then Save the World. Alright, I'm almost done. Yeah, 93%, so... We almost done. Oh, let me see if I can upgrade my vehicle, if I got any quartz. Dad. Scrope or a scorp tour? <laughs> the fuck? Dude, I don't know where the fuck you get quartz at. But obviously, I'm missing the plug, bro. I don't know. Um, and I'll do this because it's actually useful in combat. Alrighty, so I got up to level 21. Oh, wait, fuck. Actually, it's easier just to do it. So, I can equip this. I can equip that. Actually, that's better. Um, yeah, I can equip none of those. None of those. None of those. Can't do that. Dude, I can't do anything on this. Alright. 
Actually, let's see. See if I can just buy it. Um, quality Cobra. Alloy. Let's see if they sell it. Quality Cobra. Alloy. Yes. Okay. See if that's enough. Yes, all right, cool. There we go. Customized vehicle. Hooray. So I can't beat that. the shop at here we go Ta -da! bring me any rare items you find I'll make it worth your while Dude. Thank you. Here we go. How's your Darling? Do you know anything about this box? I found it. Hmm. Not to. I looked around. Ah. All right. Hmm. Just as I thought. Your necklace is pen. Let's try and open. All right. Oh. This is. What? Lilith. Perhaps. You know. If bread. So we. We. King Lucifer. But, uh, eh, I don't really care about Zelda that much, in all honesty. Zelda doesn't really interest me at all. And don't you worry about the key. And do you know about? Is that so? Only. I like games with more structure to them than something like Tears of the Kingdom where you're kind of just thrown into this massive open world and you're just supposed to explore. I don't really enjoy that style of game that much. I'd rather have like a more structured tasks type thing. Go to the demon village. Right. 
Oh no, dude, not the demons. I care so deeply about these demons, bro. Yeah, Breath of the Wild was the first Zelda game I played. My god, dog, the character designs are so fucking cringe. Ah. Oh. Morning. I recognize that spell. You're that bumbling angel who broke my widescreen. I thought I tore off. DJ Neon Skate with a 2, if you think about me and Sony doesn't have to rely on... Yeah, exactly. I think that was their idea with buying Bungie, is to have like first-person shooters in-house, but Bungie's not producing anything. We're not done yet. The bugs, dude. Ferrix of the Five, that's literally Demon King Debura from DBZ. I don't really. Just like. That's the thing I always like knew about the fucking Dragon Ball creators. He just straight up reused characters all the fucking time. So the devil is the good guy and the angels are evil. Divine one. I could have used it back then, but now Aaron, steal Lucifer away. Interesting. Satanism? It would seem so. <laughs> I did it. Lucifer's been sealed away. Yo, based angel. Fight him again. Like I'll ever give in to an angel shrimp like you. Looks like I'll have to shut that insolent mouth of yours by force. <sighs> Look at this exhilarating combat, guys. Tommy 
mocked an angel to his face. Reddit chuckles. Watch it just be some condoms. Oh, it's just that shit. Oh great, I get to fight the bugs. Super insect man, dude. What a cool character. <laughs> so ass. Alright, I'll skip this one here. Um, we've got to let the trick cat guys know about this. RA2. I'll contact him right away. Oh, here we go. Here's the second to last quest. Nice. Trike camp. Okay. Should we get everyone up? Alright, go buy some more. Bye. Help drink. Thank you. Okay. So close to finishing this shit. So Yep. 
the fact there's no Rust 24-7 mode and MW3 is really pathetic. They just know that's the only thing people would play, so they don't put it in there. Huh? That's the reason why. Because they know that's all people want. <laughs> So what happened with shipment in MW2 is that was pretty much everything, or the only thing people played. Everything else was like desolate. Here we go. So I guess I have to go down the long way. Probably. Make sure there? not to go in so deep that you can't touch the bottom, Prince. Uh-huh, thanks. Bots are generally no good in the water, either. I got it, okay? I know how to keep myself from drowning! Why do I have doubt? I wonder if you can even get down there from here. Yeah, I thought Modern Warfare 2019 was alright. I had fun with it for the most part. I like fast time to kill CODs. Personally. Alright, yeah, this is the way down. Of course, it's purposely obfuscated, so I'm gonna have to go down this massive winding path. Farsland soldiers are pretty tough. I bet they train on the assumption that war could break out at any moment. That mindset alone might explain the difference in strength between them and the Royal Army. Yeah, this game is just not good. I don't know. There's just so much fucking bullshit in it that any redeeming qualities of it quickly evaporate. Lots of sharp turns on these mountains. If you're going to use a bot, please drive slowly. Hey, if we fall, we'll just deal with it. Are you crazy? Dude, I can't wait for all the retarded Xbots to be like, Oh man, Call of Duty looks so good this year. Who have never actually played COD in their fucking life prior. Or they maybe played it like super casually back in the We're day. That's going to be fucking funny. All these overnight Call of Duty fans are going to start popping up. A casual COD player? Not if it's a good COD. I mean, shit, I put over a thousand hours into Modern Warfare 2019, Vanguard, and MW2. So I have like 3,000 hours across all three of those games. Um, I just don't like certain CODs. But no, I would say I'm a pretty hardcore COD player if I like COD.
Yeah, I wonder if it'll finally get that hold the line dipshit off of Fortnite and he'll become a Call of Duty simp now. You know, instead of spending 400 days in Fortnite or whatever the fuck, he'll put some time in COD instead since it's a microslop game. Yeah, I put 1,200 hours into Modern Warfare 2 last year. So, dude, I when I like Call of Duty, I play it a lot. But I did not like this year's. Hell yeah, dude. I thought I ordered dude, shouldn't her name be Breed? Forgive me. Former king. Garum shall not be fired. However, if they flee to Sandland and continue to oppose us. You're telling me you still haven't found the resistance? Nah, dude, she can fix me. Blast them out and burn them to ashes. It's the other way around. I thought I. I liked COD Ghost, personally. I thought it was pretty fun. The maps just suck. Yeah, it's going to be a Black Cops game, so it's going to suck, bro. It's unfortunate, but true. All right. Almost done. I can't afford this shit! Solos. So needs this one. Tank parts. Is that better? Yeah. Sure. Um, customized vehicle. Hot diggity dog, dude. Oh, you can't swap it in combat. That's good. What if I need to use it in combat, dude? No, I'm still in combat. I love how his fucking riot shield can block a tank shell. Like, are you fucking kidding me? What? Who am I in combat with? Oh, all the way up here? Plenty of stuff to explore. You're shitting me. What? Oh my god, dude. There we go. Not to love. Exploring is well and good, but watch your step. No, I don't think Microsoft fired key COD devs. I haven't heard about that. They laid some people off from Sledgehammer, but that's about it. 
but I don't think they fired key devs. They're not going to fuck with COD, bro. That's like their one guaranteed moneymaker. So they're probably just going to let that shit run as it was. They would be fools to interject into the COD process, because it's the only way they're making their money back. Yeah, same here. They're a hundred billion dollars in the hole, basically. Any Bro, this tank shell is great now. First time Call of Duty no longer becomes an annual release is when the franchise is dying. That'll officially mark the end of COD. That's how you'll know it's Jover, bro. Because that means Microsoft is actually influencing the development process. <laughs> Looks like Final Fantasy is making a comeback. What do you mean? A comeback from what? Final Fantasy has been back. We've gotten like the absolute peak Final Fantasy games back to fucking back. Like ever since 13, pretty much every single Final Fantasy game has been great. That is unless you're a Final Fantasy fan, which means you only like Final Fantasy 7. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a Final Fantasy fan. Only played 7, only likes 7, doesn't like any other game except 7. Final Fantasy 15 is great, bro. I don't know what to tell you on that. There's a camp over there. Final Fantasy 15 is fucking awesome. has already begun. Let's get moving. Masala? Alright, here we go. Incompetence surrounds me. Oh great, this guy again. Hey. Yeah, I never platinum in Final Fantasy 15, but I got all the achievements on Xbox. But now, my
Dude, what is this shit where I can't fucking shoot him? It's irritating as fuck. There we go. Hooray, that was so much fun. Oh, he runs away again, dude. What am I going to fight? 4.0 now? Dude, I am so ready for this game to be over. Oh my god. Who is winning? The resistance is fighting bravely, but they're desperately outnumbered. They I'm close to platinuming rebirth, but I gotta do the Chadley simulation. Damn, man. Yeah, I don't have the patience to Platinum Rebirth. I would hate the game by the time I finished it. So I'm just not going to. This is the thing, is if, like, trophies are irritating, I start to despise the game when I'm playing it, and I don't want to do that with Rebirth. I actually really like that game, so I want to maintain a... Uh, you know, positive outlook on it and having to do a bunch of shit I don't want to do is going to make me dislike it.
Uh, Peter Moore talk about Xbox? No, I haven't seen that. Was that recent or old? Because if it's older, then maybe. Has he said something recently? Yeah, I like Xbox achievements a lot. They're way more satisfying than trophies. The only thing I like about trophies is I don't feel as obligated to get them. Like, when I play a game, I feel obligated to get achievements because I like them. Hell yeah, dude. The bl now. fucking blue-haired baddie. The Supreme Commander is preparing to act. You lay down your weapon, and I might put in a... You should know I'm too stu... That's true. The Anne that I know is stubborn. You never would go easy on me back when we... Oh, I would. Well. We'll find out. Dude, she could fix me, guys. Hope you're not expecting me to start going easy on you now. We're here to stop you, Rosetta. You and your father both. Dude, I love that shit. It starts you out of your tank so she gets free hits on you. Hell yeah. Gotta love it, man. Why can't I open my menu? Dude, this game is so fucking jank. It doesn't let you fucking open things when you want. Like, I'm spamming the fuck out of my D-pad to open the fucking menu. Alright, final shot. Boom. No! She better be alright, man. Enough of this. Hell yeah. Stand. I'm afraid I can't do that. Biel. I'm grateful for your long lifespan, fiend. It will give me the chance. Come on, let's go. No. Rosetta. What a waste, man. Ferrix of the Five, MW 2019 was the perfect COVID game. That game had so much good post-launch content, and it was my most played COD ever. I missed that game. It really was, man. I played a shit ton of it because of COVID. Because, like, all my classes went virtual, so I would just play Call of Duty or Minecraft while sitting in class. It was great. It's how school is supposed to be. Dude, what a fucking waste, man.
for gain. Yo, what the fuck? No. I'll give you a glorious death. You'd prefer that to getting a lecture from your father, wouldn't you? <laughs> That's the only tragedy of this fucking game, man. They even gave you a final cake shot as she died, too. It's like, now you really know what you're missing. We've got to move. I can't live without you. Here we go. You all right? Get him, Mia. The world is eliminating. Oh, if it's the interview about putting uh, shit on PS5, then I've already seen that. Yeah. Um, dude, I'm heartbroken. What a fucking waste. What's wrong? That was some prime cut, dog. Like, what the fuck? Go back to Europe. No. I've never been to Europe. Uh-oh. <laughs> Amazing. Reddit chuckles. Bring her with you. Holy shit, bro. Them cheeks. That light. That's a quadium. 17. 16. Dude, I'm telling you. That is some prime cut, man. I vaporized this bitch ass. That's what you deserve, you fucking piece of shit. Yep, I think I'm at the like final part. They're not serious. How very foolish. Father. Why? Can we learn nothing? Why? 
by Munio. We can't fire Garum on our own territory. I don't remember making any such promise. <laughs> like when Leo put in King Jail. You didn't protest. Now it's time for him to become comically evil. Luhongo. All right, we can skip this. All right, I think this is the final mission. Let's see. Yup, this should be it. Thank God, man. I am ready for this game to be done. Kit plus buy and then repair kit purchase. Thank you. Yeah, still not level twenty four, man. It's fine. They probably want you to do a bunch of side activities and shit. Them things are perky, bro. My father said that he would stay here. That's why I want to see him. I take it you found him. Yeah. Alright, we can skip this corny ass shit. No, let's see what this bitch has. I don't have any shekels to give him. Bring me any rare items you oh. find. I'll All make right. it worth your while. Oh, head for Spino. Oh, of course you can't fast travel to the fucking most common place in the fucking game. Oh, they want you to watch this cutscene. Oh. Hell yeah, dude. There she is. Wipe you out with a red will attack anyway. No, come on, Rosetta. He is not a. I'm sorry. Wait, tell me why I just died. I should have died. Why are you 
asking me? Because both. And what do you? Yeah, she is stacked, bro. Absolutely. Let's let Ari know that we're going back. To uh, I'm not sure it's a deep. <laughs> My favorite soundtrack on Oblivion, Reign of the Septims, baby. Easy choice. Is everyone saying this? Why do I have to speak with the fucking mayor? Over the dam. Bitch, I don't care. You are a waste of my fucking time. See, this bitch has the items I need. Oh my god, she has literally nothing. Wow. Okay. At least you can skip the dialogue in this shit. Skip. Speak with the best bitch in the game. Hell yeah. Why don't you look chipper? That depends. Are you saying you want my? I won't ask you to. F I just want to know where the, f the airplane. It's the only way to stop. <laughs> It's this is a good soundtrack from Oblivion. I don't remember what it's called, but... Apparently it's called Oriole's Ascension. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, that shit's fucking fire, dude. So I needed to come back here for no reason whatsoever. Gaming, dude, hell yeah. You fix me, please, mommy. I mean, uh, hey, think there's some way for us to just take control of Garum without a fight? That would be ideal, but I just don't see how with the tools we have available. Uh, you just want the chance to tinker with some crazy you bought, huh? Got me. Oh, do I need to go up that way? Probably.
Although, it looks like I can go up. Yeah, let me just go this way. Because I see enemies right here, which usually means it's the way you're supposed to go. Rosetta is also an attractive name. It's definitely unique. When fighting on uneven terrain, always gain the high Yeah, shit, at this point, I'm probably going to just go to the gym after I'm done streaming. To attack from above, but a royal well, I don't know if, what time do they open on Sunday. Shoot. Let's see. Um... He just disappeared <laughs> when I shot at him. What the fuck? Alright, no, he's not a fucking uh, actual thunder. No, I don't need my beauty sleep, dude. I'm already beautiful enough. Thank you. This place is overflowing with creatures you've never seen in Sandman. If anything, I need a beauty to sleep with. <laughs> This is it. Don't. Don't. I'll skip this shit. I don't fucking care. Commandeer an airplane. Oh god, we're gonna twin towers this hoe. Not eat the bug burgers. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? I guess you can't use your. Oh, you're fucking shitting me! Bro, a fucking another stealth segment? You're fucking joking. Oh my god, dude. Are you fucking kidding me? This game just refuses to just not fuck you in the ass. Dude, they take pleasure in just raping you. Literally. With boredom and bullshit and fucking repetitive tasks over and over again until your fucking asshole can't stretch any further. God damn, man. Here we go. Here we go. This shit is disgusting. Alright, fuck you. I got a plane.
crud. We're surrounded. I don't play here. Scoop. Bro, she's been through enough. Let my bitch breathe. Holy shit, man. <laughs> the only person that should be laying me <laughs> fucking laying her out is me, bro. Like honestly. Yeah, Oblivion has the best setting, man. What are you doing? Easily. Thank you for trusting your back to an enemy, General. No. Father. Someone is trying to play hero. Supreme Commander! Someone's there! It's Rosetta! What is she? Abort! Cease fire now! It, it's too late! We can't stop it from firing now! <clears throat> Thank God, man. She's been through enough. So it missed us. Thank God. I knew that you would. What were you? Need to keep the diversion going. Beelzebub and the others should be en route to Garm as we speak. Yeah, they know where to aim the camera. Understood. Our sensors are picking up something. The thermal signature. It matches that of our own high speed plane. The resistance must have hijacked it. Quick! Turn this thing around! We're going to swap this fly! We got spotted. They'll shoot us full of holes in no time. Let's lose altitude, Prince. What the fuck was that noise? Maintain this altitude and get it as close as you can to Gara. Oh, it's the dude's sound in this game that he recorded. What the fuck? Don't get too close to the rock. Oh shit, I'm controlling this. Look where you're going. I gotta say, this is surprisingly responsive. Every 
I got struck. Thank God. Dude. Oh shit. Alright, here we go. What the fuck hit me? Oh, the guns. Fuck, those actually can hit you. Never mind. Alright. You actually have to dodge those. I thought they were just special effects. Bro, what? What? Bitch, I'm not hitting these. What the fuck? There was something off about that fucking camera angle, man. Like, you did not look like you were actually hitting that shit. I did not hit those red things, dude. Yeah, there's something really fucked up about the hitbox on those. There's no fucking way I hit those. I have to redo the entire section. This is ass, bro. This is ass. I didn't fucking hit that shit. Oh my god, dude. This is infuriating. I didn't fuck it. Alright, bro, this is cheeks. This is absolute fucking cheeks, bro. I did not fucking hit those. It's game over, literally. <laughs> I I thought we were Now let me guess, it's going to take like 30 minutes to get through the ship minimum no turning back you find the command center it's gonna take at least 30 fucking minutes of a bunch of gay environmental puzzles and all that type of shit to finally fucking get to where you need to be
Oh my god, bro, this game! I fucking hate it. I'm done. I'm done with this fucking game, dude. Quit. It's, mm. Holy fuck, man. Just please make it stop. I hate these segments inside of the airships. They're so fucking bad. This shit's gonna take forever. I already know. It's gonna be like at least an hour before I get to the fucking final area. Oh look, a boss fight. This is totally necessary. Dude, I was mowing through these earlier and now all of a sudden it's got infinite fucking health against me. Believable. Should add something for you to shoot. Yeah, look at this empty, soulless environment I have to traverse through, man. That's how all the airships are. They're just so fucking bland. It's the worst parts of this game, hands down. They're just large for the sake of being large to pad out the runtime. Hey, that container moved. Good. Now we can pass. Another control panel? Button mashing time. Yep, slop tactics. It's just padding. It's literal fucking padding. Like, I'm at the fucking climax of the game and I'm having to do the same fucking shit I've done since the very beginning. Like, they've killed all fucking momentum towards the end. Now it's just like this repetitive slop. Every fucking game nowadays makes that same mistake. It's like they don't just know how to let you get into the fucking ending. Like, nobody wants to do this type of shit right before a final boss at the conclusion of a story. I don't understand why every fucking game dev does it. It's dumb. Once you get into that, like, oh, I'm done with the game type mentality, you don't want to fucking do this type of shit. Like, look at this shit. Fucking gimmick platforming crap. It could do so much good, but to like, hell yeah, dude. I could be fighting the final boss, but nah, platforming segment.
looks like I can get on and keep going. All right. Dude, I'm just ready for this shit to be over with. This is like the most unnecessary padding at the fucking end. I don't understand why games do this type of shit. It's like, oh yeah, you're at like the final act of the game. Now let's have this massive fucking padding set. It's like Dead Space, dude. Dead Space did the same fucking shit. You get to the very end of the game and then they throw a fucking escort mission at you. Oh, guard the fucking whatever monolith or whatever the fuck it's called. It's like, why? Nobody wants to do this shit. Just put you in the fucking boss fight at that point. Nobody wants to sit there and fight the same fucking enemies they've been fighting over and over again throughout the entire game at the very conclusion. We want the fucking ending. The padding needs to stop. Oh great, my tank. God damn it. <sighs> the marker, uh, whatever the fuck it's called. Here we go. Hopefully restore my health and my tank probably not. It's wishful thinking. With everything they've got, we must be getting close. Holy shit, dude, that thing just melts you. Well, Alright, good riddance. Dude, this shit is so unnecessary. Just stop! Why is... These are just empty fucking hallways. It's just why? This is so unnecessary, bro. It's just put me in the fucking final boss fight already. Sweet, an oh, great, more of these. Let's ride it all the way to the top. Rebirth does not have unnecessary padding except chapter fucking eight's ending. Or no, not ending. The fucking prison sequence and then chapter 11. This entire game is padding. I can forgive minor padding segments. But holy fuck, this game does not have minor padding segments. The entire fucking game is literally padding simulator. Like, if it was an hour or two of padding, whatever. I can deal with that. Towards, like, the middle of the game, too. But when you have straight-up padding at the very fucking end just to draw out the runtime a little bit longer, it's irritating because you're already in the mood to fucking finish the game.
Rebirth doesn't have padding at the end of the game. It's like straight up story progression for like five hours. <laughs> Like, the last fucking two chapters of Rebirth are literally, like, story overload. They almost give you too much story because of how much, like, lore and interesting shit they shove into the final moments of the game. It's not even a boss sure rush segment. Prepared. It's just the same fucking repetitive enemies you fought over and over again with more. No. Oh, look, it's the same fucking thing I fought earlier. Wow. They're just, yeah, they're just reusing every single fucking enemy you fought. That's either, what this either, shit either is. Either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. They're literally just throwing every single mini boss you fought along the way at you in the last fucking hour. Had that runtime, boys. If the game ain't 30 hours, it ain't real. Looks like we're in for a fight. Nicely done. Oh shit. Thank you. Hooray. That was so much fun. <laughs> All of that just to walk into the next room. Thank God, dude. That was so worthwhile. Holy shit, man. Seven Minute Man with the what? 39 months. Stellar Blade is game of the year for me. I love the story characters and especially the gameplay. It... Uh, I found it cool they ended off in a cliffhanger hoping for a sequel game of the year worthy until I played Peak just now. Hell yeah, man. 
Yeah, I think uh, Stellar Blade is the second best game I've played this year. Easily. It's a fun game. I don't know. Sony should stick with doing third-party deals, in my opinion. Fuck God of War Ragnarok and those fucking dog shit games like it. Just start making more fucking third-party deals with companies like, uh, you know, uh, Shift Up or Square Enix or whoever. Oh, another boss fight. At least it's a new boss, so I'll give him credit for that. He's a fucking cyborg, dude. I don't need to. Not that I've ever been able to read what's in your heart. Oh my god. Alright, let's go. Holy fuck, let's stop with this talk no jutsu bullshit. Oh shit. Fuck. I got stuck in a fucking death thing. Alright, I'm not using that thing. <laughs> that thing is trash. Ah, oh, man. Ah, shit, man. So get her, friend. You gotta obey just before it fires. The bot is completely defenseless while it's firing the laser. Dude, this phase sucks. You gotta use your tank for this. I gave up now. The last ten years would have been for nothing. Side of oh fuck, dude, I got stuck in the animation. Um let's go to this. Alright, I thought quickly. Oh shit, I'm stuck. Fuck, dude. 
This is so fucking cheeks. You get stun locked into a fucking animation. Why do you lend these humans your strength? Oh fuck, I got mm. Or has that old legend so rubbed off on you? This is AIDS, bro. Don't make me think. You're the only one pretending to be on the side of justice. Pretending? A moral being upon you cannot even conceive of it. Greater good dares to reproach me? Shut up! Fatty words don't make you better than me! Thanks, if you don't understand. Hey, why can I not aim at Thank you. Dude, this sucks. <laughs> I'm so done with this fucking game, man. Honestly. For real, dude. I hate the fact that it doesn't heal your fucking vehicles. Ever. Like, you never get a chance to actually heal your fucking vehicles, which is annoying. Dude, there's like no way to dodge that shit. Alright, let me use a fucking item! I don't get this shit where the D-pad selects when it wants to fucking work. That shit's so infuriating. I don't know, man. I'm ready for this fucking game to be done. I'm ready. It's fucking slop. Let's go. All right, two more hits. Boom, hooray, how satisfying. Fuck this shit. Seven Minute Man with the two, the Seth Elemental Wing Phase was annoying. Yeah, I didn't prepare for it at all, so I just had to like fucking wait until the wind elemental effect was on, and then I could use a uh, Thundaga with Barrett, and then I was able to do it. Alright, I don't need a talk no jutsu moment. Yeah, that was like an hour of padding just to get to the final area. Watch, they're gonna- Oh wow, they're not gonna drop more enemies, I'm shocked. Honestly. See, right here they should let you get more fucking repair items and all that type of crap. No. No, sir. Alright, well at least they gave me some repair kits there. Oh boy, here we go, guys. Ugh. What the fuck is he wearing now? Behold. A fucking dog collar and gimp suit? What the fuck? 
Dude, this is like some pedophile vibes here. What the fuck? Or rather, it was. Until deceived by you nasty demons, they fell further. And it is us angels' duty to bring the humans back to the light and vanquish the demons responsible for... <laughs> Dude, this is like weird. Yeah, this is like some fucking pedophile type shit, bro. I don't know. This is kind of giving me the ew feeling. Maybe there's a reason why he made the devils the good guys. I don't know. This is definitely uh, odd, to say the least. Can't change if you feel this book. The only cool. judgment here will be my fist in your face. Right. I'm not going there, yeah. Boom. Nuke his ass. You fiends deserve no mercy. What the fuck is this shit? Freeze and flip. Oh, dude, I'm fucking done with this shit, bro. Every last one of you Come on. If you just infinitely dodge, you become invincible, so that a, like attack literally becomes worthless. Like, it's supposed to trap you in place so that he can hit you with those projectiles over and over again, but if you just spam dodge, you're literally invincible. Dude, why does this shit look like a literal PlayStation 2 game now? The graphics just dropped in quality dramatically. Yeah, I don't know. Dude, that boss design is like really fucking pedophile coded. Like, that shit's creepy. Like, his previous outfit was fine. Why did they need to put him in that fucking pedo bait shit? Fucking God, dude. There's no way. What is this shit? Losing your nerve, are you? As if. 
my... Bro, he's turning into fetish shit. This is literally some fucking disgusting fetish shit, bro. This is fucking fetish shit. This is disgusting. Now he's morbidly obese. Inflation hentai type material. Oh my god. Just stop, bro. This is literally fucking fetish. Oh, bro. Ew. This game just turned to like a fucking 1 out of 10, bro. This is absolute fucking disgusting garbage. His nuts are a critical hit spot, too, dude. Yeah. This is 100% fetish shit, bro. The devs of this game 100% have a fucking fetish for this guy. This is definitely pedophile coded. It's not a coincidence. All right, let me open my menu. Holy shit. It's not fucking rocket science game. If I push the fucking button, I want it to work. This is disgusting, man. I'm appalled. I am actually physically appalled right now. Yeah, I'm surprised journalists didn't give this a 10 out of 10, man. I cannot believe they literally made a fetish porn pedo bait final boss, dude. That is disgusting. Like, do you know what's creepy, too? Is he had a fucking crotch bulge in his, like, little kid form, but in his muscular form, he doesn't. What does that tell you? My God, bruh.
Barracks of the two. This is why DBZ is but I don't know anymore, man. If this is from the same guy, I might have made the right decision never watching DBZ. Isn't that there were two urns? Ah, King Lucifer's inside of it. We're talking about my dad here. I'm sure he's fine. <laughs> This is no time for laughter. Garum's gaining altitude. So what do we do? Jump. Get to the control room. Take back control of the ship. Another hour-long segment. Let's go, guys. We'll look for a good escape room. Pretty much. Um, I personally think you were very misguided. <sighs> the power of friendship. <laughs> Hell yeah. My God, dude, just fucking show the scene of us getting in the. Why are we sitting through dialogue about getting in a fucking escape pod? The elf. What? I said I'll survive. I... Oh my God. What the fuck is this shit, man? Oh. Let me guess. I'm going to have to walk and limp. Oh, my God. No. Why do I need to do this? Just show it in a fucking cutscene. I gotta go rescue the pedophile bait. Still alive, huh? Here, stand up. I shoot. I still don't have my strength back. You need a hand? <laughs> oh, dude, they didn't take the escape pod after all. We made it this far together. You can I can't fly. What? But you're a fiend. You're a half fiend. Oh, then what do we do? That's a lie. Luckily, I've Oh, I see. They're the floaty tablets I got. Okay, everyone hold out your hands. Once you swallow these, you'll be able to float for 10 seconds. So make sure to take them right before you're about to go splat. Than staying on it. Um, okay. This is going to take. We. Thief, your turn. Oh, me? Oh, hurry up! <laughs> Wait. Does that bratty angel count? 
Here we go. Of course he brings his little fucking pedophile bait twink with him. Hold on to him, you fucking dumbass. Nope. Oh, actually, one person died. That's it. One person. He got evaporated. That was it. D Dad! Dad! Were you able to get out of the jar on your own? No. As luck would have it, the urn smashed against a rock. Lucky for me, too. You saved me from a rough landing. Oh, that was me. Big sis? Big sister. Dude, she got a flat ass, dog. What the fuck? Hey, everyone. That's the ideal Japanese fucking figure, though. A flat ass and big titties. You all made it safely. I told you the tablets would work. <laughs> Those things didn't help us at all. Getting the timing right is impossible. We all chickened out and took That is the ideal Japanese body type, though. Flat ass, fucking massive tits. Looks like your family actually came to our rescue. Ah, save me too. You must be my mom. But how? I thought Mooney Hook killed you. Oh my god. There were two urns of slain. I was in the other. You really think? Some second-rate angel could have defeated me without one of those? Oh. Oh. I see. I see. Now kiss. Boo. You've grown up so much. And your father? My father? He's fine. Big better. Oh my god, he's so fine, this guys. Is your daughter Lily? Yes. Uh, pleased to meet you, Grandpa. I'm Anne, sir. That's right. Bow to Satan. Never oh my god, bruh. By this undignified form of address again. I am Lucifer, the king of demons. Uh, your majesty. Queen Lilith and Princess Anne. I deeply regret what I did ten years ago. I was wrong about fiends and harmed you and many others in my ignorance. The people of our nation are the ones who deserve an apology. You should be saying this to them, not me. As you say, Your Majesty, I will accept any punishment for my crimes, be it prison or death, without complaint. Hmm. Any punishment? In that case, how about I wipe Forest Land off the map in five seconds flat? Huh? He's joking, Bread. But mend your warmongering ways. Use your talents for the pursuit of peace. That's right, dude. Satan and the demons really just want peace, guys. The very concept makes me feel ill. Um, King Lucifer. Dude, I'm wondering if the fucking Dragon Ball guy had a lot of debt or something and he had to, you know, put out this slop. 
Because this is like almost like fucking satanic propaganda, hey, dude. Right. This is like literally satanic propaganda. Guys, you see this? It's raining. Well, I'll be. It's the aquarium at work. It took 30 years, but it's being used as the peachy intended. Finally. By the way, human, what was your name again? Oh, uh, are you asking me? It's Rao, sir. Well, Rao, you've done well. Yeah, he must have been running low on money or something, and you know. You're a credit to your species. If you like, we have a place for you at Demon Village. Thank you, I'm honored. But I don't intend to turn in my sheriff's badge quite yet. After all this... You'll return to being a humble sheriff. I like you, Rao. Here, have a treasure chest. Huh. Dad! I was wondering if I can play games for two hours a day now. Maybe? Don't I push your luck. Practicing your flying would be a far better use of your time. R right! Dog, that was absolute garbage. Holy shit. And so rain fell on Sandland for the first time in decades, bringing with it many changes. In Forestland, the people welcome the return of King Jam. Sandland and Forestland signed an official peace treaty with each other. Normalizing relations and finally putting an end to their long war. King Jam charged Bread and Rosetta with repairing the rift between humans and demons to prevent further misunderstandings. As for Munio, back in the celestial world... <laughs> Not fair to find one. Why do I have to sweep the storehouse for a thousand years? Dude, why are the angels literal pedophile bait? That is so disgusting. Oh my god, bruh. Let me fix it. Oh my god, it's just like old times, guys. Oh boy. This thing's in bad shape. Gonna need to take it to the garage in Spino to get it fixed up. Yeah, Spino is our next stop. Hmm. Well, I'll come with you. What about seeing the world? Oh, it's not like I'm in a hurry. Pretty sure 
hanging around you guys will give my skills a better workout oh than seeing the world <laughs> just make it stop dude it's road trip time oh my god dude Thank fucking god. Alright, I'm done. Let's see what my total play time was. 19 hours, I'll never get back. The music is actually good. That's the only like redeeming part about this game. Is the home screen music. And it's not even in the game. That was a video game. Like, why don't they have music like this in the overworld, bro? That shit would actually be good. Oh my god, bro. This fucking retard goes. Where are your videos trashing Sony? It's clear you became a Sony Pony fan. They delisted hundreds of countries from Helldivers and Ghost of Tsushima. And they planned that for all future PC titles. And like, I just replied and said, I don't care. I live in the US, not Zimbabwe. <laughs> <laughs> fucking suck my cock, bro. Oh my god, I'm so angry that fucking Afghanistan and Zimbabwe and North Korea can't play uh, fucking Ghost of Tsushima, dude. I'm so offended. Oh my god. No way, dude. Why does it say close game? I guess because it's still running. It just, you know, the disc isn't in. All right. Well, there we go. Exciting shit, man. Ooh. I'm glad that's over with. Did Dreamy continue the grind? Here, we can see real quick. I know. I know math is hard when you're an idiot, but... Uh... Like, if you're a broke boy, just say so. God, that heals my soul. My rating, like a 3 out of 10, bro. What's up, Gabriel? Streamcast guy here. Dude, I love the fact that YouTube's captions thinks he says, What's up, Gabers? It doesn't think he's saying gamers. It thinks he's saying Gaber. When you run. Uh, What's up, Gaber? Stream Turn on the captions. What up, Gaber? Streamcast, bro. What? <laughs> Hold on. Holy shit, man. Dreamcast guy's voice is not even recognizable by fucking AI. What's up, Gabers? Streamcast guy here. Uh, let's see. There we go. Yeah, see, what up, Gaber? Streamcast. <laughs> Can't even fucking, you know, speak fluently to the point where AI 
What up, Gaber? I wonder what a Gaber is. Uh, Oski Woski with the two. All that and still an hour of gaming. Tough dad. That's right, man. Bro, that was like miserable towards the end, though. Holy shit. And Ferrix with the five. Toriyama peaked with Cell and DBZ. This is a pure travesty. Bro, this was the fucking pedophile bait at the very end. Then the inflation fetish shit. And then the fucking literal bowing down to Satan. Like, yeah, that shit was absolute fucking degenerate garbage. That shit was absolutely fucking disgusting towards the end. Creator's freedom with the two. Game over. Thank fucking God. <laughs> oh my, bruh. That was horrible, honestly. But it's done now, and I can sell the game. I wonder if GameStop's doing that 50% trade-in yet. Hopefully. Mm, doesn't look like it. Yeah, I wish GameStop would do weekly ads again, because that made it really easy to, like, track when they were doing, like, special shit. What's your stuff worth? Let's... Oh, wait, there it is. Extra 50% trade credit. Uh, On all video games. How long? All right, sweet. Perfect timing. So, they do have it. So, sand, land. How much does it trade in for? So, $24. So, yeah, 36 bucks I'll get for it. And then what about fucking Trash Island 2? Dead Island 2. Let's see. Nine bucks, so I'll get 15 back. All right, that's not bad. That's not too bad, man. Yeah, that's why I bought it fucking physically, so. I mean, I used GameStop credit to buy it in the first place, so it's I didn't even spend money on it, but I'm going to get more GameStop credit for it back. Yeah, that was just very disappointing, man. I could have, like, I don't know. Maybe if I was directing it, I could have made it a good game. Maybe I would have a talent in video game, like, directing. Maybe not developing, but, like, the director. I don't know, bro. I feel like I have good taste for, like, how to make games fun, personally. I feel like that's my main focus with gaming, is just making shit fun. And I think I could have, like, a good, uh... A good ability to do that. But can play some fun JRPGs. What should I play next? I could play... I don't know. I'm gonna suck at Double May Cry. I may play that. And then y'all can laugh at me for being garbage. Yeah, I have a shit ton of Switch games I need to play, too, bro. I have too many games. But the nice thing is, is I'm building up my Reddit shelf. So, you know, I can be a real gaber, like a uh, streamcast here. But, yeah, let's watch this real quick. I'm Cast Guy here, and today we're talking about a very strange and expensive Sony L. Because for expensive. the last 72 hours, obviously, we've been bagging on Xbox a lot. Shadow the Edgehog? I have Shadow the Edgehog for the original Xbox that I could play on my 360. I also have Sonic Riders, too. Which, that would actually be a fun game to play. For their closure of game studios. Microsoft has been completely screwing up their management and thus has decided to completely axe Tango Gameworks and Arcane. But now, I guess Sony wants a piece of the internet hatred. And so, they are currently being forced to do mass refunds on Steam. And the entire mess, to me, 
it's just stupid. But let's take a look specifically at what Sony is doing wrong and why they actually refuse to fix it. Hi, I hope you're having a great day. If you could, give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. You know what, Dreamcast guy? I really appreciate you saying that because I was having a really bad day, and now you just made everything better. So thank you for that. So in case you weren't watching a bunch of videos last weekend, I was talking about the drama revolving Helldivers 2, where this game, despite being the biggest PlayStation game of the year, in fact, across the board, this is actually one of the biggest games of any system, it has been admired in a, a, a bit of very necessary controversy because of the requirement for the PlayStation Network. Essentially, they were trying to force a rollout where if you wanted to play Helldivers 2, you had to actually create a PlayStation Network account, tie it to your... Oh my god, how could they? ...steam account and then use that to even get into the game that you already had. Now this even actually applied to people that bought the game back at launch. So people were having their copies of the game actually deactivated. Now it's yeah, that I can see the issue with. Like they shouldn't have sold it in those regions to begin with, but if they want to require a PSN account, who fucking cares? But yeah, they shouldn't sell it to people who can't make a PSN account. I will agree on that point, but overall requiring a PSN account is not a big deal. I don't fucking care. Funny is that we just got an official statement today from Sony saying that, yes, this is them, not Steam. Sony is the people that are putting these weird restrictions on, but this mistake is already being repeated. So right now, everybody is getting excited for Ghost of Tsushima coming soon to PC. This was supposed to drop next week, and they found out that it's essentially not going to be playable in huge chunks of the world. You can see here we have a list of countries that it is not going to work in. So it seems like somebody over at PlayStation headquarters has this weird obsession with trying to find a way to bump up PSN concurrence of like, okay, what will make us the most money? Well, if suddenly millions of people are making PlayStation Network accounts, maybe it'll make it look like we're a more successful company. Now, this entire thing is bonkers because both Helldivers 2 and this, they do have an online component. These are not single player games. Previous PlayStation games that they have been selling on Steam did not have this requirement because they were single player only. Games like Days Gone, Horizon, stuff like Spider-Man, obviously those are purely single player, so I guess they didn't really try and roll out this very sloppy release of PSN. But what's weird is the fact that I don't understand what PlayStation thinks this would benefit. So because of it, they are now doing mass refunds. Because PlayStation Network does not exist in these countries, Steam... Yeah, the thing is, bro, what they should have done is just sold two versions of the game, which they might do. Sell one version in the fucking third world countries that doesn't have multiplayer, and then sell one version that does. That's what I would do. I would just make, like, you know, a first and third world version, for lack of a better term. You know, the one version that has the PSN requirement comes with the multiplayer, and the version that doesn't have the multiplayer is the same price, but is only available in the countries where PSN isn't available. There's your fucking, uh, you know, problem solved right there. But, hey, you know, I don't work in the gaming industry, so... Team on the back end is not letting it them sell it. It seems like an like, easy solution to me, but I don't know. I don't know why somebody didn't just think of that. Steam is a very good platform. There is a reason that the other sort of launchers, like a uh, freaking, what, what is it called? Epic Games Launcher. These have never really taken off in the way that Steam has because Steam definitely has a reliance on good customer service. Like, if you can buy something, they want to make sure it works, it runs, it's easy, it installs, yada, yada, yada. So Steam is basically going, okay, if this is not playable in certain countries, then we're not going to make people buy it in certain countries. This is so bizarre. Uh, I love a lot of the comments on this because people are understandably upset. 
This is worse than Helldivers 2 because this is in a non-PSN regions. Sorry, what's that? What's worse is Helldivers 2 is still gone in non-PSN regions, and they even added more places to the list like the Baltics yesterday. So PlayStation... No, they didn't lie. They just blocked all future purchases. Everybody who already bought it still has access to it. It's just they blocked the purchase in those regions moving forward to set expectations. So they didn't lie. You should have bought it earlier. <laughs> lied about reversing the Helldivers 2 decision, and now they're going even further by... What did they lie about? You don't have to sign into PSN on Helldivers 2. Until you have to sign in to PSN on Helldivers 2, they didn't lie about anything. The fuck? I don't know. I guess everybody has different definitions of lie now. They're restricting Ghost of Tsushima. This is because they eventually want PC players to pay for PlayStation Plus. Now, I'll admit it, I didn't even consider this. Like, PlayStation Plus, it's difficult. They are not going to make people pay for PlayStation Plus. Oh my god, dude, stop. Just stop. Now we're getting into conspiracy theory shit. They're not going to make people play pay for PlayStation Plus. They just don't want to fucking have to deal with, you know, people bitching about the fact that well, it's whatever. I don't know, man. This is just dumb. This is a non-traversy. If you can't play the game, boo fucking who, go pirate it on PC. You have that option, right? You know, if you're so greatly offended... I don't know, man. Difficult to tell how much money that makes them, but some of the numbers are that, like, somewhere between, like, 30 million and, like, 45 million people have PlayStation Plus that actually pay for the service to get access to online. If Sony actually tries to make it so their games require a subscription fee to pay them online, e even when you're playing it on PC... This would be a catastrophic L. They're Still not like going to do it, bro. Like, oh uh, this is something I've said in a lot of videos over the course of the last 72 hours while roasting Xbox enough, which is that why can't you guys just have enough money? Why are you not able to make hundreds of millions or billions of dollars? It has to be infinite money. You know, Microsoft is making billions and billions of dollars, trillions of dollars total as a company, but they get mad and try and ax Tango Gameworks and try and ax stuff like Arcane. This is what's frustrating is well, that I don't think they tried. They just straight up did. This is them trying to be like, OK, how can we make extra money on the people that are already trying to give us money? Now, understandably, people are freaking out. You can see stuff like this. This is actually Sony stock price has been completely plummeting. This right here is the release of Helldivers 2. You would expect numbers to go up. I mean, that's been a huge surprise success for PlayStation. Instead, investor trust goes down and down as they try and institute the stupidest plans possible. Look at this. Like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bite up. wait, did he really just say that the Helldivers 2? Oh my god, bro. This is why people just need to shut the fuck up about business if they don't understand business. That is not the reason why Sony's stock is falling, you absolute dunce. It's because they announced they were going to buy Paramount, which is a failing business, and people don't like that. Oh my, you really think Helldivers 2 is the thing that's moving the needle on fucking Sony's stock? Dear God, man. I just, like... I really wonder how fucking dumb people are sometimes. <laughs> what other piece of news is in the fucking, you know, news cycle that might be a little bit of a bigger deal than, you know, Helldivers 2? Oh, I don't know. Sony spending $13 trillion to split the purchase price of Paramount? You know, that might be a little bit bigger of a deal. Get rich off that bottom. Okay, I'm not I, I'm not a stock investor. Don't listen to my stock advice. Sure. I, I'm so baffled because right now the industry is in a weird spot of change where AAA games have been stagnant, lots of remakes and sequels. I mean, and I love those. I do definitely enjoy a good remaster as much as anybody else, maybe even more than other people. There's rumors of like a Final Fantasy Tactics remake coming soon and Final Fantasy IX remake coming soon. As excited as I am, 
I keep thinking back to like the Xbox 360 generation or the PlayStation 3 generation when you constantly got new series, new ideas, new boldness, whereas companies now are just so stagnant and what is the safest bet for the biggest return? And I see a lot of people talking about the fact that we're kind of in the age of the indie, where only tiny games made by tiny studios oh, even have the guts to try something indie bigger glazing. and different. Here we go. <sighs> Ghost of Tsushima comes out here on May 16th, and uh, people are already photoshopping it, getting downvote bombed into oblivion. I, I definitely think there is a good chance that when it releases on Steam, people are going to try and install it, and it's not going to work. So expect to see the overwhelmingly negative relatively soon. I have noticed that a lot of the frustration going on right now with both Sony and with Xbox, you now obviously for very different reasons, but a lot of people are mad because... Honestly, the silence is deafening. The fact that Phil Spencer has not come out and made a statement about the closures of studios and the fact that Sony won't come out on stage and just specifically address why there's this forced rollout of PSN. What is this weird? Why is there this forced rollout of PSN? They want people registered to their account, just like every other third party publisher on PC. I mean, Dreamcast guy loves to talk about how much he loves to play on PC. Bro, every other game company requires this exact same fucking thing. Go play Red Dead Redemption 2 on PC. Go play a Ubisoft game on PC. Go play a Microsoft game on PC. Every single one of those companies will make you sign in to their account. That's just the way it is, man. You know? Like, that is the PC landscape in today's day and age. Even on console, dude. You need a Capcom account. You need a fucking Activision account. You need a fucking Rockstar. You know, I don't know, bro. This is just a big fat nothing, if you ask me personally. But whatever. Focused thing about how many concurrent players can we get on the PlayStation Network. I wish they would just talk. But this uh, Janet Garcia... I've been wanting to read this tweet in a video for days now because I, I think it's so brilliant. And we're going to end with this. So many of Xbox's comments are aging like milk. This is the danger of selling the good guy narrative. It only works if you're doing good things. This is why PlayStation and Nintendo don't talk to anyone anymore. They're like Exactly, because they don't have to. The games speak for themselves. The fucking business speaks for itself, and if people like it, they can buy it. If they don't, they don't have to. Phil Spencer has diarrhea of the mouth. Like, nah, I'm good. I'm not going to play myself. Sony has just found themselves in a spot where, even when they try and do something bold and new and different, which this sucks, but it's definitely very different, they're afraid to even tell us what the plan is. Come out and just give us some sort of drop of actual direct communication. Say, hey, the reason we're forcing the PlayStation integration is because we're working on cross-play or we're working on some sort of idea of, hey, cross-progression or we're trying to make it... It's pretty fucking obvious why they're doing it. Yes, cross-play, because you're going to be able to play with people. That new overlay they added to Ghost of Tsushima, which you can access your messages, your trophies, your friends list, your party chat... Like, built into the game. There is a reason why they're doing this shit. You already fucking know. Just like every other third-party dev wants you to register an account with them. They want your information, they want a way to contact you, and they want a way to fucking track the people who are playing their games. So that achievements unlocked on PC can carry over to your PS5. But they don't talk. So we have no idea if this will eventually get better. But in the short term, it sure looks like crap. But... What do you guys think about it? Tell me your thoughts. It is kind of interesting, though, that, uh, you know, there's so many countries you can't make a PSN account. You would think that there would be, a, you know, that would be like something they would want to fix. That's kind of odd, you know, because PlayStation's such a global brand. But I'm guessing most people just make a PlayStation account for like a different country is my guess the comments down below and if you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a like share it with your friends and subscribe if it's you kind of already. a weird thing like why wouldn't they just have accounts for all these fucking random countries and police keep dreaming 
And also, uh, this will probably be my only video of the weekend. I'm kind of sitting on my edge of my seat. I'm still waiting for Microsoft to eventually come out and make a statement because even after those closures, typically when Xbox takes a giant L, we get our classic Phil Spencer apology. I'm still kind of waiting for that Phil Spencer yeah, apology. Yeah, they can use so a when VPN. that drops, expect an instant video for me uh, doing this on the thumbnail. You could definitely Thanks use so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck. This fucking porn music in the background, dude. Oh, yeah. Microsoft has not had... Oh, we haven't seen anything from this guy yet. Let's see what this, you know, Glazer has to say. And a good couple of days. Sarah Bond gave an interview with Bloomberg that it did not go over well because one of her responses did not seem... Let's just say it wasn't sufficient for the internet. Ryan McCaffrey over at IGN gave a few interviews where they referred to Xbox, seeming like it's Microsoft Gaming. That interview was with former Xbox executives. Let's get into everything that has transpired uh, right now. <laughs> So if you missed it, uh, the big story everybody was talking about was the Sarah Bond interview. I had my reactions to it while I was watching on Twitter, and it was brutal to watch. By the end, it seems like Sarah Bond is, is visually upset, and she didn't give a ton of great answers. You can see here's the interview in question, and the like-to-dislike ratio is is not kind, not due to the video, but more so due to the responses of Sarah Bond. Interviewer, share your thoughts on the recent closures of Wait, Four Studios. Sarah, not oh. due to the video, more so due to the responses of Sarah Bond. Bro, that is the video. TV series was great. Bond gave the most meaningless non-answer to the decision to shut down Tango Gameworks. Just embarrassing and hard to watch. Well, not everybody agrees with the fact that her answers were inadequate. Uh, some people think that she gave the best answer she possibly could. I also had the same reaction these people had. I don't understand what her response even meant, and it was weird. Let's talk about some of the other news, though, because Ryan McCaffrey said, I spoke of two former longtime Xbox employees. Yeah, the Vietnamese government banned Steam. I heard about that shit. And both lamented the current state of the business. A lot of these smaller countries will engage in like legal trolling to like extort money out of like larger U.S. companies. So that's probably what it is. They probably are trying to find the fuck out of Valve, and Valve just said, "Nah, we won't pay it." <laughs> you know, your own citizens can deal with that. Business. One told me prior to this week's awful studio closures, I had lengthy conversations with a bunch of Xbox founders, and we all came to the same conclusion. It's no longer Xbox, but Microsoft Gaming. Ouch. I've seen a lot of commentators online allude to this idea, and basically the idea is they bought Activision, and they've now extended themselves too thin, and unfortunately, Microsoft is coming in and saying, TikTok, it's time to start making us some money. And unfortunately, that means everything that they've said in the past doesn't matter. It means yep. they need to cut budget, and that means firing a lot of important people. The Tango Gameworks studio, like, none of the studio closures make any sense. I'll give, maybe Redfall makes sense because their previous game uh, tanked, but then you have Matt Booty behind the scenes. Why is my one Vietnamese viewer upset? Like, I don't think it's right, but the Vietnamese government's fucked, man. A lot of those countries are fucking corrupt as shit. And saying, that's not the case, so it's very confusing and mixed messaging. Just be like, look, Redfall was a disaster, it damaged our brand, and we have to close that I don't that know why they'd be pissed like, at me. I didn't ban say, Steam. That's not why we closed it. Then that doesn't make any sense to people. Xbox 360 launched with a few hundred people. Last I heard, Xbox is now almost 30,000 people. This is another excerpt from Ryan's interview where he talks about how they're basically being crushed under the own weight of all the businesses they've acquired and they have no idea how to manage them. And that growth has led to, in this Xbox veteran's opinion, increased oversight and meddling from further up the Microsoft food chain. The reason this seems so inconsistent with previous Xbox leadership team statements is that these decisions probably aren't being made by Phil. This is all getting di dictated by Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella and Microsoft CFO Amy Hood, and it all stems from the Activision acquisition. Long story short, they spent too much money. They need to return on that investment. And while their profit margin for Microsoft is higher than ever, Xbox is, I think with the Activision merger, it was only up a small percentage. And without it, it was down 5% year over year. And a line must go up in the business world. So that's the reality we live in. Here are the changes going into effect. This is the email from Matt Booty to staff. Arcane Austin, the studio will close with some members of the team joining other studios to work on projects across Bethesda. Arcane Austin has a history of making impactful and innovative games, and it is a pedigree that everyone should be proud of. Redfall's previous update will be just will be its last as we end development on the game. The game and its servers will remain online for players to enjoy, and we will provide make good offers to players who purchase the hero DLC. So it's so bad that they're just giving <clears throat> your money back if you purchase the collector's edition of that particular game. Steve Tatillo had a different read on They the should have given it back a year ago, bro. The whole Sarah Bond interview, he said this is part of an exchange. Because they knew this shit was coming. About Xbox's issue. Bond cites industry struggles, said the week's studio closures stem from Xbox's responsibility to ensure their game devices services are there through moments even when the industry isn't growing and is in time of transition. I think that word time of transition is very telling. And as Steve Tatillo was translating here, long story short, it means something has changed. There is a big transition internally. We know there's a transition in the industry, but Xbox and the brand under Microsoft Xbox is feeling that burn right now. The through line across numerous interviews with Xbox execs strongly suggests pressure within Microsoft on the Xbox division. Phil Spencer to me in February about the 1900 jobs cut. I have a commitment to the company on the Xbox business being a profitable and growing part of Microsoft. And when we look at the numbers from the last quarterly report, they were down 5% without the Activision Blizzard merger. That's not going to be good enough if that's Phil's responsibility. 
Sources familiar with Microsoft's plans tell me that the company continues to evaluate other Xbox exclusive games coming to PS5. I understand Sea of Thieves will be a key test for whether other games might make their way to PlayStation 5 or Nintendo Switch. You might remember that from a while back where The Verge broke the idea that more games are going to be coming to other platforms. Well, if we jump on over to PlayStation, let's see how that did for them. Sea of Thieves is literally the number one game in EU. And if you're wanting my sources for this, it's literally the PlayStation blog. So this is PlayStation blog reporting their top sellers. It's Sea of Thieves. Yup. So... That, oh, it's only four games narrative is going to fucking <laughs> join the sweet little lies list to Phil Spencer pretty fucking quickly. In Canada, Sea of Thieves was third. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 was fourth, meaning Sea of Thieves beat Call of Duty. Granted, it's a, it's a dated release. In the EU, it's Call of Duty. Grounded is on there now. Fallout 4 is also on the list. So, and if you go to the, the PS4 games, Fallout 4 is the top game with Minecraft and Fallout 76 following nearby. So, Sarah Bond was actually asked a question about this, and I was shocked she didn't bring up the fact that Sea of Thieves was doing tremendously well on the PlayStation brand because off the top of my head, I remember. Yeah, she didn't even know how well it was doing. She's like, ah, I don't actually know. Remember that? And I thought it was a little bit odd that she didn't bring it up. Other quotes included Bond. No, we they did bring it up. She said, oh, I would have to check. She didn't even fucking know how well her own games were doing when they just for the first time launched on a different platform. Like, I think that tells you everything you need to know, man. These Microsoft motherfuckers are just completely checked the fuck out. They don't care anymore. We know our core users love Game Pass. Game Pass is a gaming subscription. You get a whole portfolio of games, but importantly, you get every single one of the games we build day one in Game Pass. And the quality of the breadth and the breadth of those games has only been going up over time. And you're going to see some more really big games going into Game Pass later this year from Activision Portfolio or Bond. Across the whole slate, across the whole slate, you're going to see some really amazing things. And keeping that as something that is really special for Xbox players is central to us. So they're still betting on Xbox Game Pass, but here's what's baffling to me. They have now owned Activision Blizzard for several months. Why isn't World of Warcraft put in the Game Pass? Why aren't all the 360 versions of the Call of Duty games put in the Game Pass? Where Exactly, or just at least put something like Spyro Trilogy or fucking Crash or Prototype, like anything. Just put like one title a month in there or something. It's been seven fucking months, man. Nothing. Absolutely fucking nothing. It's weird. I don't know, man. Like, it's not a good sign for fucking, you know, Goy Pass's viability, that's for sure where they can use that as a selling point. Like, are they holding on to this until June as they're closing studios? I just, I don't get the strategy. This is an easy win for them. Just like with Riot and saying, okay, you get access to everything if you use Xbox Game Pass for League of Legends, etc. Why would you not do that with a company you now own? What's with the holdup? Continuing on. This is a platform holder that has lost its purpose and direction that fundamentally and perhaps inevitably, given the sheer vastness of its parent company, misunderstands why it exists. That's from a damning piece over on Eurogamer that talked about how it seems Microsoft has lost its way. It, they've given all these platitudes and positive things that they've said over the years, but, but when you take a long, hard look at what has been successful, uh, it's not the games. On, off the top of my head, there's only a handful of games that have seen wide success for them. I would argue that those include Forza Horizon 5 and Gears 5, and the span between those two is astronomical. And the reason I use... Forza Horizon... Or, yeah, Forza Horizon 5 is good. Gears 5 was a massive fucking flop. That game was dead in a few weeks. I was one of the few people that actually stuck around to play the multiplayer. And after a while, it was almost impossible to find matches. And the matches you did find were just fucking literal sweat fests. Use those two is because in successful terms for them, you're not talking about... I don't think Starfield. Gears 5 I don't think Starfield well. was probably Same. a game that met the metrics they were happy with from Microsoft. But maybe I'm wrong on that one because the overall consensus seems to be somewhat negative. One of the other positive stories I want to talk about was the Microsoft Gaming Store. I thought that was positive when it was initially announced. I tweeted about it. I'm like, well, this seems positive. They're opening a mobile store. But when you start digging into it, there was an update shortly after that. Dina Bass said, Xbox clarifying that initially the store will start with discounts on in-game items and the like rather than full games and apps, though the latter remains the ultimate goal. And the Verge said the following. I have it tweeted here. Although Bond alluded to games in an actual store in her statement during her interview at the Bloomberg Tech Summit, a statement provided to the Verge paints a slightly different picture. This year, we'll be we will debut our first mobile offering where mobile players can find deals on their favorite in-game items and just so Gears 5 had 3 million Game Pass players. Bruh. Yeah, it did horrible. 3 million players in Game Pass? Yeah, R.I.P. Gears of War, man. They fucking made that. Well, I mean, to be fair, Gears 5 was dog shit, bro. The multiplayer was good, but holy fuck, that campaign was horrible. But in order to have a lively Gears multiplayer, you have to have a good campaign to bring people into the multiplayer. That's the thing, is like Gears 1, 2, and 3 had these fucking awesome campaigns that left people wanting more, which brought casual players 
into the Gears of War multiplayer and kept it alive. Without that pipeline for the casual players, you're just sending it out there to die. Discover new games starting on the web so players can access it anywhere. Bond says, this web-based store is the first app store with its roots in gaming you have a store already this sounds like a coupon page where you go and get discounts on games and i'm completely baffled as to what it's supposed to be this is xbox.com slash play where i can see games like little kitty big city and if i want to buy it i click this buy button and then i can do exactly that i don't understand how the store that they're talking about is different than that or better in any way because the way it's described in the follow-ups is not some grandiose store experiment it is literally a coupon page and i'm a little bit baffled to that are games going to be playable on it they mentioned bejeweled and minecraft i do not like look maybe you understand better than i do but this is not clear to me and this is much less exciting than what was said on stage so i'm confused and when we start looking at you know we brought up how it, the executives feel like microsoft might be being crushed under their own weight when you start looking at everything that they have on their plate right now it's a lot you have dude cliff blazinski has like literally begged to come back to microsoft and fix gears of war and Microsoft will not bring him back. So they're just determined to fucking kill that shit. Phil do probably doesn't even like Gears of War because it's probably too gory and fucking masculine and, you know, <laughs> mature. I mean, he is the one that wanted blood out of Halo, so remember that. 30 studios, and this is an old graphic, 50 plus projects. You got 343 three with their Halo Infinite stuff, the Coalition with an unannounced Gears IP, they canceled this IP, Turn 10, Force Motorsport came out. It was, it was, I liked it, but... I don't think it was a resounding success. Everwild hasn't come out yet. You have uh, Playground Games. You got Forza Horizon. Uh, Ninja Theory is about to come out with Hellblade 2. Perfect Darks and development craziness. On Dead Labs down here. You can't really see it because of how my camera's position. But On Dead Labs is right here. We've heard some not exciting stories about that. We have uh, Compulsion Games, which was uh, Stealth of Midnight, I believe is the game. Obsidian Grounded is doing great. Who knows how Avowed's going to do? And there are some IPs here. When you start going towards the bottom and you start looking at the Bethesda Studios, though, this is gone. This is gone. This is gone. Uh, Toys for Bob is gone. Granted, they've been given a contract to make more games. Um, and when you go down to Activision Blizzard, like, uh, this has been canceled. Who knows what the status is with the unannounced IP? And then you got the, the regular stable Overwatch 2. We know it's been doing okay, but it's, it's probably not doing as well as, say, World of Warcraft or. I mean, even Diablo. Has Diablo Immortal is not a Blizzard game. Diablo Immortal is a fucking NetEase game. Blizzard did not develop Diablo Immortal. They just licensed it out to fucking NetEase. That's not a Blizzard game. Is Hearthstone even still alive? Do people play that shit anymore? Hearthstone was huge when I was in fucking high school. That's when it came out. And one of my friends was like top 500 in the world. <laughs> Like, that motherfucker was good at Hearthstone, but I don't know if people even play that shit anymore. Has been struggling, but they are about to come out with a new season, so time will tell on that one. The Microsoft story is just a little bit of a muddled one right now, and I wanted to end on a more positive note, but it's it's a little challenging to do that right now. I had one other quote here that I wanted to bring up, and on Hi-Fi Rush, it has been gold on a stream translated to say their version of success publicly was not Microsoft's version of success. And, well, I didn't understand what she was saying because it sounded like- Hearthstone is dead, too? Rip word salad to me he runs a bunch of businesses so for him it was crystal clear he's like oh yeah so Hearthstone was pretty xbox fun though saw it as successful. It. you know who didn't microsoft and microsoft owns xbox so that seems that theory and that interpretation does make it a little clearer for me this quote from ryan that we talked about at the beginning i spoke to two former longtime. i xbox remember that was valve's one failure in gaming was their uh card game i forget what it's even called but didn't they delist it because it did so poorly and they tried to re-release it and it just bombed Forgot what it was called, but yeah, they like that was like Valve's one fucking flop as a game uh, developer. Artifact, yeah, I think that's what it was. Employees, it's no longer Xbox, but Microsoft Gaming. Ouch, seems to ring true. Is Xbox still running the show, or have they sort of lost that ability to do so? Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell if you do like my content. I greatly appreciate you watching. Thank you so much to the members for supporting this channel. If you want to become a member, I love that we're pretending that Xbox and Microsoft are separate fucking entities, dude. Phil Spencer is the vice president of fucking gaming at Microsoft. He literally sits on the board of Microsoft. Why are we pretending that Microsoft and Phil Spencer are two fucking separate, like, entities, man? It makes no sense. Phil Spencer is one of the highest rating people, or rated people at the fucking, you know, literal company of Microsoft. The Xbox division is a part of the larger Microsoft machine. It always has been. Like, now we can go, oh, Phil Spencer's just innocent, guys. It's actually Sadia Nadella, the evil guy that gave Phil Spencer a decade and a hundred billion dollars to spend to try and turn Xbox around. You know, Sadia Nadella hated Xbox. That's why he gave Phil unlimited time and resources to try and fix it. What an evil fuck, dude. It's not Phil's fault. He needs another $100 billion to turn it around. 
Oh my god, bro. Shit's wild. Yeah, I think everybody just wants an actual game from Valve at this point. Nobody wants, you know, card games. Card games are lame, bro. Who's next? So Microsoft has done something quite rash. Back in 2021, Microsoft bought ZeniMax Media, which means they bought Bethesda, which means they bought a bunch of studios that Bethesda owns. And Microsoft decided to close a bunch of them. Among those are Arcane Austin, the division of Arcane Studios that was in charge of Prey, Tango Gameworks, who brought us the widely different titles Evil Within and Hi-Fi Rush, both wonderful games for very different reasons. And they're also closing Alpha Dog Games, the makers of Mighty Doom, a mobile game, and Roundhouse Studios. So, um, what is this? Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, we ask the question, what the hell is going on at Xbox? So from a business perspective, let's say you buy a bunch of things that make things that make money. And then you take a hammer and you destroy those things. Are you a good businessman? <laughs> no, you're not. And, and that's what happened here. It's also what a lot of big gaming companies have done in the past, EA in particular. And it's true that the gaming industry, as well as most industries, are feeling the burn. Which, by the way, wrong tagline for the controller they announced our... <laughs> that shit was great dude feel the burn today as we fire hundreds of people after closing all these studios hey kids it's me microsoft i've closed a bunch of your favorite studios leaving you to feel burned and you should you should feel the burn today when people got angry about that they changed it pretty quick but uh, back to what i was saying industry-wide things are not going as good as they were when everybody was locked in their house with nothing to do kind of not the biggest shock in the world and then we consider the whole inflation problem and stuff going on in geopolitics it's That's not shocking right. bidenomics baby and it's harder to make money right now and while xbox's cloud services have been making a lot of money for them makes perfect sense honestly their hardware sales, which includes Surface, it's not just Xbox, but all of their hardware sales across the board are not doing good. Xbox is, of course, the premier brand regarding all of that is certainly the most successful thing that they've come up with in terms of hardware. And if that's not doing great, there's problems. So that's the criteria we have going in. And then Arcane Austin, for instance, was tasked with making Redfall, a live service game that nobody at the studio wanted to make. Yes, there was a cool idea for a world, but no, these are people who A, were not experienced at live service games, and B, did not want to make live service games. Both Arcane Lyon, the original French studio, and Arcane Austin's expertise is entirely in single player immersive sim based shooters slash stealth games and redfall ain't that we could go into the development of redfall all we wanted but it's a game that suffered a lot of serious issues during development particularly staffing issues and again people didn't want to work on the game people were hoping it would be canceled by microsoft or at least rebooted into an arcane game it wasn't and there was actually a 70 percent turnover seven out of every 10 developers that worked on prey left during the course of this project and <laughs> because nobody wanted to make this shit and microsoft and zenimax forced them to do it you can tell that in every way, this is not a game that should have come from Arcane Austin for a vast array of reasons, and it is in no way shocking that that game didn't do well. It's not a particularly good game. It's not the worst thing I've ever played in my life, certainly, but it's not good, and it didn't do good. And the first instinct one might have is to say, well, what if they just made Redfall good? A and that's not how it works. Again, this is a studio with expertise, literally the best guys at Immersive Sims. I would play an Arcane Austin or Lion Immersive Sim any day over basically any other Immersive Sim. The only one that really has any chance is Deus Ex, and the two more recent ones of that were far from complete games. Arcane has delivered on that genre more than than anybody else and to move that studio into making a type of game that frankly isn't doing well at all regardless of who is making them like the only one of these that's really doing well is Helldivers 2 and there's a lot of reasons why it's doing well despite the fact it's a live service game because live service games are just becoming more and more hated Redfall didn't have a chance it could have been twice the game that it is and it wouldn't matter so to me that's a severe management problem it is unwise to delegate people to work on something that they don't have any experience exactly. doing regardless of their expertise in another area so that's the problem I think with Arkane Austin and then Austin. get fucking pissed at them when they don't deliver it's like no shit <laughs> even still Redfall wasn't completely mandated by Xbox. This was apparently a project when Bethesda was just being Bethesda, so it being forced on them wasn't necessarily Microsoft. It was forced on them, but Microsoft bought If that. I gave you a bag of chocolate and said, make me a loaf of bread, do I have a right to get angry with you if you can't fucking produce? No, it's unreasonable. Um, wouldn't they have the resources to, I don't know, help this project? You would think, right? According to Dinka Bacaba, a studio director at Arcane Lyon, their studio is currently safe, and they have a lot more of the original Dishonored devs on their team, which is good, but he says this is just terrible. It shouldn't happen. So, I mean, we can kind of at least understand where Microsoft is coming from in closing Arcane Austin, but it starts to get a little murkier when we start talking about Tango Gameworks. So Tango Gameworks was responsible for The Evil Within 1 and 2, the first of which held the record for highest selling first month of sales for a new survival horror intellectual property for about a year before Dying Light came out, and Although The Evil Within 2 didn't do as well, it's a well-regarded game, and so is Ghostwire Tokyo, which I don't think was like a smash hit, but at one point they had 5 million players. They tweeted out a thank you to the 5 million players of Ghostwire Tokyo, which implies pretty decent sales. The game they came up with after that was Hi-Fi Rush, which I did the Before You Buy on. Great game. Did pretty well. Had 4 million players, which isn't the 5 million players that Ghostwire Tokyo had, but I'm also positive that Hi-Fi Rush was not as expensive to make. And while yes, these player counts figure in a lot of Game Pass players, the point of Microsoft buying these studios is for them to have Game Pass games that you can play for free on the Xbox platform, thus incentivizing people to go to the 
the Xbox platform. And again, with those games, it worked. Those are not numbers to balk at. In my opinion, this throws a fly in the ointment when we're talking about the narrative that the problem is these studios aren't living up to expectations. No, Redfall absolutely did not live up to expectations, but what did Tango Gameworks do? From what I can tell, exactly what they were asked, and they performed as well as one might expect them to. So there's not really a common denominator between these two companies in particular, and I don't think you can argue either of these companies are dead weight. Yeah, Redfall is a dud, but who cares? I know this is going to sound like I'm going, ah, if I was in charge, but if I was in charge, my response to Redfall would be, oh, maybe Arcane Austin should be working on Immersive Sims. Like, you don't take old Yeller out back and shoot him in the head because he had a single accident on the carpet. The phrase isn't, if at first you don't succeed, close the doors and put everybody out on their ass, but it's not even about success. Like, clearly, Hi-Fi Rush did well. Ghostwire Tokyo nah, did well. I don't think Hi-Fi Rush, this is the thing I think is interesting. I saw this on Twitter today, and I think it's spot on. They shadow dropped Hi-Fi Rush in an effort to get it to fucking flop. So that way they would have an excuse to shut down the studio. But the critical reception of Hi-Fi Rush was so strong that they had to like embrace it, at least temporarily, until inevitably they were going to shut it down. I think that's what happened, personally. I don't think they expected Hi-Fi Rush to be as well received as it was. They sent it out there to die in Game Pass, and then they were going to shut down the studio. But the game did better than they thought from a perception standpoint, even though the sales and download numbers weren't that impressive. But because of the positive press and critical response, they couldn't shut down the studio immediately. That's what I think happened. That, that to me, sounds like the most realistic scenario because it explains everything. Because if they thought they had an actual banger of a game there, they would have marketed the fucking shit out of it. Well, apparently they just didn't... Why would they want to shut the studio down? Because, obviously, Ghostwire Tokyo didn't make them any money. And, you know, they wanted to cut the dead weight, is my guess do well enough, which scares the hell out of me when I start thinking about other studios and IPs that Microsoft owns. These are people that are in charge, that seem to switch direction quickly, don't seem to really care about success or failure, but really just whatever whim they seem to be operating on currently. Those are the same people who say whether or not the developers of Hellblade send you a sacrifice in its upcoming sequel. If those people get to keep their jobs. Those are the people who get to say if the Machine Games people, the people who made the fantastic Wolfenstein series get to keep their jobs. But how many Starfields are going to have to come out before they start looking at Todd Howard sideways? My guess would be quite a few because this standard is clearly not being applied across the board. And then forget closures. Think of the stuff that they can do without closing a game studio. They can meddle in the affairs of any of these studios that they want. People complain about certain choices being made in games, and oftentimes those choices aren't even made by the developers. They're made by the people who own the development company. These are the same people that are making those choices, that are in charge of these moves. And I'm just going to say that that's probably what the real problem is here. Like, these are not consistent people. The day after killing Tango Gameworks, Matt Booty, the head of Xbox Game Studios, had a town hall amongst all the employees that remained to talk about the future goals of Xbox Game Studios as a whole, and had the gall to say, we need smaller games that give us prestige and awards. Aaron <laughs> Reedberg, a VP at Xbox Games Marketing, on oh, April 21st, said Hi-Fi Rush was a breakout hit for us and our players in all key measurements and expectations. Why are these people running the show? I'm not saying that absolutely everybody who said these things or the whole team thinks a certain way. It's probably Yeah, not less than 10% of people who actually played Hi-Fi Rush beat it. That's the thing, though, is Game Pass encourages people to download a game, play it for 30 minutes, and then download another game, play it for 30 minutes, download another game, play it for 30 minutes... There's no investment or genuine care about any of this shit. People don't give a fuck about games they don't buy for the most part. Not like that, there's probably people with different opinions on here, but the result has been closing studios that create games that they are willing to call breakout hits. Can you imagine what that feels like for somebody who works at Tango? Just last month, an executive said publicly that they consider that game a breakout hit by all conceivable metrics, and this month they find out that everybody involved is losing their job. What does that say to every other developer that isn't Activision Blizzard or Bethesda itself? And what does it say to consumers who spend money, invest their time in these video games? And video games are, to be clear, a pretty big suck of both of those things on the consumer end. We buy that stuff with the assumption that there is somebody on the other end that's going to be consistent and that companies that make these games and the sequels to these games and future games are going to be around because the whole reason that we continue buying games is because we assume they're going to be good. Part of the reason we assume they're going to be good is because we know that good developers are making them. This is a move from Microsoft that inspires no confidence anywhere across the board. And just to be clear, that should be regarded as a harbinger of what is to come. When they are aggressively cost-cutting things that are doing well or they know are capable of doing well, they are establishing precedent by which their teams of executives will go back and think about, well, we did it with these people. Should we do it with these people? I mean, by the standards of success, these people are no more successful than those people why should we keep them around this is how we lost so many of the double a game studios of the 2000s I mean yeah dude that's wild they shut down fucking pandemic man that is crazy to me like mentioned ea and how they <laughs> ea was on a fucking you know butcher spree
sucked up a bunch of studios and closed them. And that's really what happened with a lot of that. Hi-Fi Rush is one of those types of games. A lot of what Arcane does is one of those types of games. And now everybody on that level is thinking, oh, well, we have to make games that are... Visceral, I can understand, because, dude, EA put a lot of money behind Dead Space. They really tried to make that game work. To EA's credit... They really tried to push Dead Space and make it into a success, but it just never caught on to the mainstream. They're going to be AAA hits on AA budgets. That's that's good. That's going to be easy for us. That's going to result in a lot of good. No, I don't see this as a sign of anything good to come. You guys know that I can be old bird yells at cloud, but I've seen this kind of stuff happen before, and it happens in waves. Last year, we had a big wave of this kind of crap happening with the whole Embracer situation. That's calmed down a bit, but now this is happening, and this isn't going to stop, especially if the mode of success in gaming is you build a studio and get bought by one of the huge companies. Anybody who achieves financial success with a game and your main goal is to make games, do not sell. I'm just saying that right here. We, the gamers, would absolutely appreciate that. And we will support you when you put out good stuff. And also, we got to support but the But will they? Dude, people bitch and fucking moan about paying full price for a good video game nowadays. Like, people are like, I will never spend $70 on a game no matter how much content and how much I enjoy it or no matter how good it is. I refuse to pay full price for something that I claim to love. So, I don't know, man. People don't support the devs. Developers coming out of this Xbox apocalypse because you know a lot of them will start new studios and you know a lot of those studios will put out the games that those people actually are excited to make rather than something like Redfall. It doesn't really matter whether we do or don't support Microsoft, but those guys it does matter with. So we should keep our eyes peeled to that. At the same time, we also got to pour one out for everybody who doesn't make it back. There's going to be people who just get a job somewhere else and stop making games. And that sucks. That sucks. A lot of these people you know when these Microsoft deals were announced thought, oh nice, Microsoft has all the money in the world. We're going to have better budgets and the ability to make better games. And this is how that went. It sucks. This whole situation sucks. I, I don't have anything positive to leave you with either again let's just keep our eyes peeled and try to support the developers that come out of this on the other end that's the best i've got how about you leave us a comment let us know what you think if you like this video click like if you're not subscribed now's a great time to do so we have brand new videos every day of the week best way to oh wait fuck shit some clown gave octopath traveler a three-star review on xbox for not being on game pass so they dude that's what i'm saying like people are fucking ridiculous absolutely fucking ridiculous Goy Pass, especially on Xbox, has conditioned the worst type of customers ever. I won't play it unless it goes to Game Pass, dude. It's like, all right. You will never get the type of games you want moving forward. I don't know, man. Angry Joe has said nothing about... Really? Really? Maybe he's out of town. Redfall, DLC, MIA. Yeah, he's probably out of town, bro. That'd be my guess. What is this shit? Uh, the, uh, the first time, let me now unveil Xbox. Ugh, Bill Gates, dude. I'm a Nelly! Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Xbox stepped on a rake again. For the umpteenth time in the past decade, Microsoft has found itself on the wrong end of bad news. And as usual, it's self-inflicted. Just as Team Green was starting to gather some positive momentum, Fallout is the biggest show on TV boosting all the Fallout games along with it, the upcoming launch of Senua's Saga Hellblade 2, and that may be the very kind of prestige, single-player, narrative-driven, third-person action-adventure that the brand has long lacked. What do you give your life for these disciples? The next... Disgusting, bro. Hellblade 2 deserves to burn in hell, because that shit is garbage. Absolute fucking garbage. Uh, the Grizz of the Ten, use your yuppie verse here. And what we need to do is um, get these franchise. Wait, these franchises make us this amount of money individual, okay, and we need to get this franchise down to zero. What do you think about that? Hi, I'm a liberal. Yeah. I want to be your friend. <laughs> Yeah, roll up the sleeves. I'm a little chicken neck bastard and no one's got the will to see what I am. 
That shit is so great, man. I love that fucking video. Xbox showcase was also announced for June 9th, where we might finally see the long anticipated Alex next Jones entry in the will always be a W just for that clip alone. Four series, the next entry in Call of Duty, and more. Xbox Brass torched the morale of customers and quite possibly its own developers alike by announcing the closure of three studios, Tango Gameworks, Arcane Austin, and Alpha Dog, and the consolidation of a fourth, Roundhouse. Fans were quick to point back to recent and now hypocritical seeming quotes from Xbox executives, such as marketing boss Aaron Greenberg saying last year that just axed developer Tango Gameworks' Hi-Fi Rush was, quote, a breakout hit for us and our players in all key measurements and expectations. We couldn't be happier with what the team at Tango Gameworks delivered with this surprise release. And in the 2021 Xbox documentary Power On, Sarah Bond said the leadership team asked themselves how to learn from and not repeat the same mistake of a acquiring a studio, in this case, original Fable developer Lionhead, only to later shut them down. Yeah, well done. And one year ago, in the wake of Redfall's disastrous launch... Why is his mic so shit, bro? You would think IGN could afford fucking actual microphones. Xbox boss Phil Spencer said, quote, One thing he I... He literally sounds like he's recording in his fucking webcam. ...won't do is push against the creative aspirations of our teams. When a team like Rare wants to do Sea of Thieves, when a team like Obsidian wants to do Grounded, when Tango Gameworks wants to do Hi-Fi Rush when everyone thought they were probably doing the Evil Within 3, I want to give the teams the creative platform to go and push their ability, to push their aspirations, end quote. Get him. <laughs> At best, those once reassuring quotes ring hollow today. At worst, they're outright lies. We've he a has a fucking mic pointed at him, bruh. I don't know. ...fans once proudly decreeing, in Phil we trust, and posting Photoshop... <laughs> fucking awful image. Dark Knight-esque I believe in Phil Spencer buttons online. Awfully, Bloomberg reports that Microsoft might not be done making cuts, so this may very well get worse before it gets better. For developers, that would mean further job losses. And for gamers, that might mean another possible worse Wait, before it gets better. Wait, what does he have on for the next? So Ori, I can't tell what that is. Unravel, 1 and 2, Hellblade. This must be a prop Xbox, because there's no way he's playing those fucking games would mean further job losses. And for gamers, that might mean another possible Xbox Game Pass ultimate price increase. So how did we get here? Why can't Xbox stop tripping over its own two feet? And with the Xbox organization growing so massive over the past half decade, and its reach extending not just to consoles, but to any device capable of playing video games, can the soul of Xbox even be saved? I spoke to two former longtime Xbox employees separately, and both lamented the current state of the brand. One told me prior to this week's awful studio closure news, quote, I had lengthy conversations with a bunch of Xbox founders, and we all came to the same conclusion. It's no longer Xbox, but Microsoft Gaming. Ouch. The other chatted with me at length after the Bethesda bloodbath and believes Xbox is now too big to quickly or easily get its house in order. Whoa, there is just too much surface area. You have effectively three huge companies at play and Microsoft never really finished the integration with Bethesda. And Activision is like Microsoft never figured out how to fucking run their own game studios before buying all these bigger companies. That's the issue. Like, Microsoft has dog shit management for their fucking games, man. They already ran Halo, Gears of War, Forza, Lionhead, all these other studios into the fucking ground. Now they bought Bethesda and Activision and they expect to be able to manage those on top of the studios they can't already effectively manage because they fired all the like Activision leadership and then put Matt Booty Goon in fucking charge of, you know, all those new studios when he can't even run the ones they have currently. ...times the size Xbox was. They added, quote, Xbox 360 launched with a few hundred people. Last I heard, Xbox is now almost 30,000 people. And that growth has led to, in the opinion of the Xbox veteran I spoke to, increased oversight and meddling from further up the Microsoft food chain. Quote, the reason this seems so inconsistent with previous Xbox leadership team statements is that these decisions probably aren't being made by Phil. This is all getting dictated by Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella and Microsoft CFO Amy Hood, and it all stems from the Activision acquisition. And yeah, but Phil's the one who wanted the Activision acquisition. So... Boo fucking who, he has to pay the fucking, you know, he's got to pay the price for his own decisions. The long-tenured ex-Xboxer continued, quote, the situation Xbox was in when they made this call was much different. Yeah, I heard, so I saw this too today. So back in 2021, they had 25 million Game Pass subscribers and 12 million Xbox Live Gold subscribers, okay? And in 2023... They had 34 million Xbox Game Pass members after they converted gold into core. So that means they lost 3 million Game Pass subs over the span of two years instead of growing the service. So Game Pass is technically worse than stagnating. It has a slight downward trend. That is not a good fucking sign.
different. They couldn't keep consoles in stock, making money hand over fist with Game Pass growth. The Activision acquisition seemed like a no-brainer. Now console sales are down, post-COVID recession, Game Pass slowing. The yeah, he picked the wrong fucking mic input. He's using his webcam mic, you can tell. The was more costly and time-consuming than anyone expected. And the focus on fighting the FTC probably cost them time they would have spent thinking through the people and studio implications. I 100% believe this is a board-level decision. Xbox was a huge profit center, so Satya approved a huge merger. Now games are slowing and Microsoft's stock is skyrocketing, and there's no way Satya is going to let Xbox drag it down. This is all my opinion, of course, but I'm fairly certain these are not decisions being made only by Xbox leadership, end quote. That's not to absolve Spencer for his role in all of this, unlike the tone-deaf, won't someone think of all the multimillionaire executives response of former Xbox higher-up Mike Ibarra. Spencer is, after all, the person in charge of the entire organization. The buck stops with him. The Bethesda and... Yeah, he's the vice president of gaming and a Microsoft board member. He's in all the fucking meetings with Sadia when it comes to setting these, like, targets and shit. So he knows exactly what's going on. Division Blizzard acquisitions happened on his watch. As such, he is no more shielded yeah, from... Yeah, dude, Bill Gates is gonna have to call in another fucking, you know, favor at one of his Chinese labs and get another fucking disease released. So that way Xbox can be revived with another COVID lockdown. <laughs> Saudi is going to have to fucking, you know, call up Bill Gates and be like, hey, Bill, how's it going? Hey, remember that last fucking pandemic you and your Chinese scientists released? Well, we need another one of those. You know, yeah, you can test out your vaccines again. Bruh. I mean, that sounds crazy, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. Obviously, they wouldn't do it for gaming, but that's basically what happened the first time for being by most accounts, including my own for the record, a very nice guy, than the star professional athlete is for underperforming on the field or court, despite regularly signing autographs for- Yeah, Bill Gates is still part of Microsoft, dude. He's one of the largest shareholders. He has a massive amount of Microsoft shares in his personal possession and scattered across his charitable foundations, which they're not charitable at all. They are literally working to destroy the human population, but yeah. No, Bill Gates has, still has massive control over Microsoft. For kids before games. But no matter who's to blame for the weight of Activision Blizzard seemingly tipping Xbox's scales out of balance, it's now fair to wonder if and how Spencer can save Xbox's soul. Is Xbox a gaming brand that means anything to gamers anymore? Can it stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sony and Nintendo? And if the answer to those questions is yes, then what defines Xbox? Is it Xbox Game Pass? Is it big exclusive franchises like Halo, Forza, Gears of War, Fable, and maybe, should they end up being exclusive, The Elder Scrolls, Fallout, and Doom? Is it gaming anywhere seamlessly through PC, mobile, console, cloud, and handheld support that's invisible to the end user? Can it be all of these? Should it be all of these? Or does Xbox then become a jack-of-all-trades, master of none? After all, when you think of either PlayStation or Nintendo, you arguably think of one thing and one thing alone. Consistently incredible exclusive games. That's it. We could have killed you. <laughs> Maybe should have. Uh, PlayStation is not consistently incredible with their exclusive games, but... Mm. If the board is pushing Xbox in this direction, will Spencer push back? These decisions, no matter who's making them, are costing Xbox an incredible amount of both talent and community trust. Spencer knows that, and it's up to him to fix it. To this point, I would have argued that up until this past week, Spencer's 10-year term as head of Xbox could be summed up as such. Gamer-first initiatives like backwards compatibility, accessibility, cross-play, and Xbox Game Pass. But he has yet to deliver either the single breakthrough blockbuster game that captures the zeitgeist, or the steady flow of high-quality exclusive games that breed loyalty to a platform. Now, though, he will likely be remembered primarily by how he handles this moment. Can he organize a five-company monolith, Xbox, Bethesda, Activision, Blizzard, and King, into a single entity that makes both gamers and shareholders happy? Is that even possible? If he can't, the Activision Blizzard King acquisition may prove to be more trouble than it's worth. I think that's already the case. They already overpaid for it, so. I mean, look at the rest of the gaming industry. Like, hold on, let's see. EA stock. Five year. Yeah, so EA is down from its COVID highs. So the rest of the gaming industry, and then that's even adjusting for the inflation boost. So, yeah. That's the thing, man, is, you know, everybody, like, hyped up these gaming and technology stocks during the pandemic. You know, Microsoft paid the pandemic premium, essentially, for a gaming company. And now that the pandemic's over, you know, which they're probably not happy about. You know, Bill Gates didn't get his way. But, uh, you know, <laughs> now 
they're like left with the fucking company that's probably worth closer to 50 billion and you know they have to run it and somehow pay themselves back but I don't know man Tony Esquire with the five what's up Griffin keeping up with you while stationed in South Korea is a challenge but I see you're up late in the states it's 8 25 Sunday for me yeah it's a uh, 7 30 a.m. for me here which shit bro. <laughs> yeah I was playing Sandland which I would not recommend but luckily I finished that shit and I don't have to play it again thank god yeah apparently uh, Warner Brothers lost 200 million dollars on Suicide Squad which is great to hear cause fuck that game Why fast food prices have gotten so expensive? Because Bill Gates keeps buying up all the farms that supply the fast food companies. <gasps> oh, no! Sorry, I didn't mean to let that one out. Have you guys noticed a trend that Bill Gates is behind most of the shit that's going wrong in the world? You know, he owned the fucking vaccine company, Moderna. You know, he was part of the research organization that you know the Chinese leaked the COVID vaccine from a lab from he now owns the fucking farmland that is directly resulting in fast food prices going up wow hmm Bro called it a good game before he finished it and hated it. What game? Everyone is talking about COVID. Wait. Talking about COVID is a government disease, but nobody is talking about cancer, which half the world's population is dying of. Yep, cancer is deaf. No, cancer is a result of lifespans increasing. Bro, you got to remember the natural life of a human being is 40 years. So shit starts to go wrong the older we get. And that's just normal. But yeah, I mean, there's definitely things in our food and shit that cause cancer. But cancer is not a, you know, just random fucking thing. It's been a thing throughout human history. You recommended it to someone on discount before you finished it. Yeah, I would say 20 bucks is fine still. It was garbage, though. Not worth full price. If you can get it for 20 bucks, which is what I said, I still think it's all right. Just that final stretch fucking sucked. Sandland is a game pass game? Yeah, pretty much. No, Bill Gates isn't dissuading people from chowing down on fast food. He's just making it more expensive because people are addicted to fast food. Because fast food is chemically fucking, you know, formulized to be like a form of drug addiction. You're addicted to the taste that McDonald's meat has because it's not real meat. It's fucking formulated lab meat with a bunch of chemicals and shit in it to give your body a pleasure response when you eat it that only eating that type of fucking hamburger will give you. So he knows you're not going to fucking stop eating it. Dude, why do you think the highest paying job for like a chemist is in the food industry? Because they formulate that shit to be addicting. So you keep buying it for the rest of your life. You know, you eat Oreos twice and then for the rest of your life, you like long for the taste of an Oreo again.
Like, think about it, man. Think about some random shit you had once as a kid, and for the rest of your life, whenever you see it, you also kind of get, like, a little craving for it. You know, it could be ice cream, it could be fucking Twinkies, it could be fucking honey buns, or whatever it is, that shit is formulated in a way to be addicting. So... There's like a small part of you when you see something that you used to eat all the time as a kid. You're like, oh man, like cereal, for example. Like walk through the cereal aisle and look at the fucking sugary shit you used to eat as a kid. And I guarantee you'll get like a slight craving for it as you look at it. That shit is designed to fucking literally like imprint itself in your fucking brain. So... It's a big industry. Yep, chips, cookies, soda, fucking uh anything. Anything that's processed, man. Oh, none of it applies to you? I'm sure, dude. Absolutely. You can probably smoke crack for fucking four months and not get addicted to, right? What about when the f your body starts rejecting the food because you're getting super tired of it? Well, you get burnt out on it, but the longing is always there. Like, wait two months. You'll get the craving again. Damn, go to bed. Girl. Yeah, I probably should get off. It's almost 8 o'clock, man. I can at least go to the gym in what 20 minutes so griffin meat addiction no girl had it for several what the fuck go get a girlfriend oh yeah dude yeah I'll just go pick up a gym babe real quick guys I'll be like hey you wanna be my girlfriend Be like, hey, it might be Mother's Day, and I know you're not a mom, but I can help you with that. W, yeah, I'm sure that would go well. Be like... Hey, I know it's Mother's Day and everything. Did you want some help with that? Get a right-wing babe. No, thanks. Dude, most right-wing chicks make politics their entire fucking life. Most leftist chicks don't, honestly, because most women are lefties. I would say pretty much every conservative girl I've ever met has, like, obsessed over politics. Like, everyone I knew that was, like, conservative or Republican or whatever growing up that was a girl used to talk about it all the fucking time. And the ones that were left-leaning never fucking brought up politics at all. So, that's the thing. Most women are extremely liberal until they get married. Married women or women in relationships are massively more right-leaning than single women. So that's the thing is chances are she'll change her mind.
No, it's women who are married. It's married. Some leftist chick invited me to breed her while her trans woman boyfriend watched. Hell yeah, dude. Everyone knows Griff only has eyes for Pokemon. Oh my god. Hell yeah, dude. She will be mine, guys. I believe it. <laughs> I will make Pokemon my girlfriend, dude. What does the word woke mean? You could use Google. All right, guys. I'm probably going to go ahead and hop off. Have a uh, wonderful Sunday. And I will talk to everyone later. Have a good one, guys. Peace out. If you had a chance, would you cuff Pokey? What do you mean cuff? What the fuck does that mean? Like handcuff? No, that's gay. Let me see. The fuck do you mean by cuff? Meaning. Yeah, where's Urban Dictionary, bro? In a relationship. To attach oneself to another, uh, like, I don't fucking know. Sure. Let's go with that. But anyway, I'm going to hop off, guys. I have no idea what the fuck it means. But anyway. Bye, everybody. <laughs>